boys, let's fucking go. It is almost time. I wonder if there's gonna be any hot takes. I feel like Growl's takes could be pretty hot. Dratnos is usually a man of the people. Dratnos has like a high-end rating experience, but he's also a sucker at wanting everyone to like him. I'm just kidding. But no, Dratnos usually has really good takes. Like he has the high-end rating experience, but he has a very deep knowledge of how it affects most players. He's a goddamn people pleaser, chat. Don't let Dratnos ever trick you. Mighty Teapot will be really interesting. So if you guys don't know Mighty Teapot, he's really, really interesting. Really smart. Uh, comes from a background in rating in a different game. Loves boss design and did most of the bosses this expansion. I think he'll be an excellent addition to this. Also, like me, he fucking yaps like crazy. Uh, so that should be fun. So I'm definitely interested in seeing uh, how this goes. So everyone here has been tasked uh, chat with doing something. It was coming up with their top 10. I'm not asking any of them to make what they believe the community's perception of the top 10 will be or what Haruma Red's top uh, perception will be, which we will be going over his list together after this. And you guys will, chat will be able to vote out of the five of us what list you agree with the most um, or most resonates with you. And uh, we're going to see how that goes. But first, some introductions that you guys uh, know Dratnos and Growl, but just a quick thing. So Dratnos, how are you doing today? You doing good? You ready to do this? Pretty good, man. I'm doing LFR Terrorist right now so that I can brush up on these bosses a little bit. Wait, why? I like... want my bullion, man. I need my bouillon. Okay. And, gra stuff. and Growl as well. You ready to do this? You, you come from more of a... Uh... Like, you did Mythic this whole expansion, but I think it's coming mostly from the place of needing to do it for gear. You have also the only, like, healer perspective of this list, which I think is important. Not necessarily ranking these all for healers, but just looking at it through that lens. Do you feel... Are you ready for this? And also just... Did I get that right about your raiding experience? Like, do you raid purely for the need mm. of loot, or do you enjoy it as well, potentially? I, I would describe myself as, like, a raid enjoyer i would say bosses that are like 300 plus pulls i don't really find fun and i don't really care that much about usually it's like end bosses and penultimate bosses that sort of i don't have fun with but i would i would say i enjoy mythic raiding all the way up to the point where like a boss has 100 pulls it has to be a really really special okay. boss for me to have fun but yeah i've been so basically i raided all through the first raid i was i was sat on the uh, Razageth because we needed evokers and I didn't have an evoker and then I got benched from my guild in the middle of the second raid but then I joined another guild and then did the rest of that raid and then uh Amir Drusil. so yeah I have pretty much prog experience on every boss except for Razageth and then Teapot uh I'm I'm familiar with you we've had a few excellent conversations uh on my stream in the past but if you would uh help the other people in this call and maybe all the people watching this uh some background on you in general and then also your wow rating experience so far yeah absolutely uh so hello everyone i'm teapot uh, some people might know me from guild wars too if anyone is familiar with that game i uh, do a lot of everything over there some uh, pve stuff raids obviously all the dungeon stuff pvp and i've recently come over to the dark side uh to world of warcraft uh started playing a uh, dragonflight actually in dune of last year some epic pronunciation there for everyone to enjoy uh and yeah i've been addicted uh to the game we're grinding away here like uh, lunatics trying to actually manage to keep a roster together that's actually the real hardest part about mythic raiding as i've found out uh but yeah uh looking to go pretty big you know trying to get better at the game and gonna go hard into the the war within and uh, i guess one interesting thing that you know i'm, I'm curious what uh, people will make of this i think one of the the things that's going to come up a lot in my commentary of some of these raid bosses is that uh the only thing that i've been disappointed in with a lot of these raids is that I'm not good enough to play them on the real difficulty just yet. Okay. Um, and also, what 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 were you able to do in Mythic so far this expansion? Like, how far did you get in each raid? Uh, so we, I think we were around World 1300, I want to say, for um, Mythic Sarkrath. Uh, you were there, I believe, actually. I was watching, there. Watching, observing. Yep. Uh, you know, backseating me. Yeah, I watched the VOD. It was, uh, it was some good advice, actually. I took it to heart. Uh, and, uh, yeah, then we got uh, Cutting Edge and Midrasil as well. Um, our rank was uh, better, actually. I don't recall exactly what it was, but it was better. There we go. Yeah, so, so the reason I asked you on, I actually didn't think about it until you came into my stream earlier, but I was really looking for a fourth person... And I wanted to get some some uh, like direction and perspective from people that are not doing this at the super super highest level. Like Growl plays this game at a really really high level. He raids at like a little lower than his like playing skill probably because he's like not doing it as his main thing. Dra and then Dratnos raids in a top fifteen world guild, and obviously I'm in Liquid, so like we. I didn't want this to all just be top player perspective. I think you are going to have an interesting perspective being someone who thinks about raid design a lot, is a really, really high-end raider in Guild Wars 2, 
and you have kind of experienced killing these bosses at a lower world rank while also knowing what you're talking about uh, when mm -hmm. it comes to a lot of this stuff. So I, I think you will be a fantastic addition. I'm really interested to see where your ranks differ from a lot of ours. But I do want to point out, I, you did not start playing until uh, Abaris, I believe. So your Vault of the Correct. Incarnate's opinions will be basically based on the Awakened version that you've seen, I believe, uh, two week, or two, for two weeks now. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is fine, and we'll just take that with a grain of salt, but should be interesting nonetheless. All righty. Are you Absolutely. boys ready to proceed? Have your list ready? Oh. You guys are double-checked, ready to go? All right, I will start out with my... Uh, oh, yeah, let me actually give a little bit of... Uh, so, uh, Growl was here last time. Uh, Dratnos here last time. They get how it works. But, Teapot, how this will go is we'll go in order. Me, Dratnos, uh, you, and then Growl. We will all list our 10. If I list a boss, right, and let's say it is uh like Kurog or something right one of you will just tell me if you have Kurog any point on your list either you're going to put it at the same rank as me or higher and then we'll just move on to Dratnos's the goal of this is to only talk about each boss and kind of discuss it one time total and not uh not like every single time it comes up we discuss it so if yeah just you'll get the hang of it it took last time there was like four people learning how to do this and there was like it was actually pretty much dorky that just never got it but uh <laughs> yeah you, you'll it's it's not that bad and you'll you'll understand all right so first off we have for me i have the amalgamation chamber as my uh as my 10th boss 10th best boss of the expansions anyone have amalgamation chamber on their list i have it higher you have it higher okay uh, Dratnos, what is your 10? Razageth the Storm Eater. Okay. Uh, does anyone have Razageth on their list? I do, yes. Okay, cool. I have Razageth Don't tell me where, don't tell me where, don't tell me where, don't tell me okay. where. I won't then. Yep. I'm not doing it. Yep. Okay, but all you need to know is just let us know that it is on your list at all. Uh, okay, uh, Teapot, what's your 10? Uh, okay, this is this is an exciting one. It's a good place to start. My number 10 is Echo of Neltharion. Wow. Ooh. Okay, this is, we're starting off hot. Okay, I'm assuming that no one here has that on their list, correct? Yeah, not. you could make a top 30 list of raid bosses this expansion. I'm not sure Echo of Neltharion would be on my list. Okay, this is, but this is really interesting though. I want to hear your perspective. What, what makes you really enjoy Echo of Neltharion? So... I would actually have rated this significantly higher uh, if not for the heart uh, weak aura clown fiesta. That's like my my main issue with this uh, fight overall. I didn't actually hate the map so much uh, in the final phase. What I really like about it is the fact that there's a lot of interactivity with it. You have to break the walls, then people have to go through the walls to be safe from the bombs. I really like the tank mechanic getting knocked through, particularly in phase two. Actually, I think that was really fun. Uh, to especially the the fire movement from the first ad to the second ad was really exciting mm -hmm. uh, to do as well. Uh, that was really cool, I think. And then finally, the uh, final phase, I think, is also uh, pretty damn epic. You know, you just cut those tentacle monsters coming out of everywhere. The tanks have got to control those. It's very, very dangerous, I think, like very easy to die there. Uh, and yeah, I think in the, funny enough, in the Awakened uh, version, I think there's been some improvements there, like I think in particular for phase three, because of course the map got broken. They just said, yeah, we're, we're not doing that anymore. And I think that you kind of see that it could have actually been a really, really cool fight with a couple of tweaks. If Blizzard decide that, oh, you know, wouldn't it be cool if maybe each bomb was a different color? So you could actually have proper assignments instead of having a, you know, a week or a play the game for you. There's an actual spark of brilliance in that encounter, actually, um, uh, which, yeah, I was I was really impressed by it. It's actually, if, if I was going to rate bosses that I enjoyed progressing the most, it would actually be very, very high. Uh, definitely one of my favorite bosses to actually play. And tank perspective helps here, obviously. I don't have to deal with the weak horror fiesta for most of the time, so that's oh, where that's, that's such a, a little good bit, point. That is such a yeah, good yeah, point. Yeah, so... Yeah, yeah. yeah, so that's where that's coming from. Um, but yeah, one of my favorite bosses to progress uh, in the expansion for sure. All right, Dragnos, what do you think? Yeah, I, I will. Okay, I, I don't want to dunk on it too hard because I think most of the problem is the volcanic heart. I would say not just the mechanics, like the weak aura solution of it, but just how it works in general was with the geography of the room, the amount of space you have. Even if you didn't have a weak aura solution for it, I don't think it would have been particularly fun to like to try and YOLO it either. Um, maybe with the current version of four on a much smaller radius compared to during progression when we had five on a much bigger radius, that was uh, very restrictive on what you could actually do with it. And then the fact that you got such a nasty dot for breaking the walls pretty much removed all the spots where you might do something creative or be able to like open up an extra wall and then just some run somebody through, right? Like you had to basically exactly break the minimum amount of walls to make the fight work, which removed a lot of the 
I think, potential for that. I will say this, particularly Phase 3, I felt like was one of the phases that most showcased how good pings are as an addition mm, and how much more point. space they open up. The ability to just ping your portal and, and go to it, uh, especially with the slight... I mean, this season it's got such a long ta cast time that it's almost trivialized, but even on a shorter cast time, I think the ping system there, like if it was halfway between the old cast time and the new cast time, would make it still like a pretty fun mechanic that was a lot... You know, you don't need that map week or four anymore. You don't need any of that nonsense. So a lot of good stuff there, but to me, the Volcanic Heart is just so much of what the fight was about that I can't, I wouldn't have it on my list. I think that's very fair. I think especially the criticism regarding the walls being very restrictive of how much damage uh, they did. I think that's a really good point, actually. Um, and I think that relaxing that would have, yeah, absolutely helped with kind of the creative approach uh, that you could have when it comes to actually solving the movement and, and solving how you handled some of these things. Yeah, it's, I, I definitely agree with that criticism. So I think I would have enjoyed this boss more if I hadn't have done it on PTR testing before it came out, because I know what this fight could have been. This fight was, I, I am so frustrated with this fight, and you'll, you'll notice this kind of happens with my list later, where like boss design matters so much to me that like sometimes there are fights that were fun to do, but they failed so hard in the design element that it really rubbed off uh, poorly for me. So you mentioned how strong the dot was, but how long the dot was from breaking mm. the wall. So what happened on PTR testing was the dot was potentially could be powerful, but it only lasted like six seconds. So you could open, you could pop a cooldown, you could break a bunch of different walls, and then you could, the the fact that you had a bunch of these debuffs didn't really matter. You didn't need them to be different colors to be assigned in a different spot, even though it's an interesting idea. You could just, instead of having to fit into one area and have one person leave the room, you just broke every wall and everyone spread out. And there was just a big burst of damage. A change they made literally two days before the boss was done on Mythic was you had to... Uh, you could only break one small wall just so you didn't die to this dot. And then the tank breaking the wall to move to the next phase extended the dot. So, like, I don't know. I just think huge design failure for that where weak auras ended up being a huge problem. But also you mentioned, like, I didn't mind the thing as a tank. I think that really matters. I think tanks are going to enjoy this fight a lot, fight a lot more because it was actually an interesting for tank sure. mechanic. And yep. you, you didn't have to, like, memorize where all the spots were with that map picture. But before the map picture... If you're talking about our perspective, there was a little something called a list. And you had to, like, see a list of names that could potentially get Volcanic Heart. And you had yeah. to see how many people got it and then find your name and see what number you were. And then that determined your number. And then there was a specific spot for each number. And that was so hard and frustrating. Like, I know there are people in our guild who were, like, could... There were some people that always got one, some people who always got five. And then there were people who could get, like, one, two, three, four, or five based on RNG. And those people have never had less fun on a boss. So I think this was like the beginning of private auras being really bad. Uh, but I also, I can kind of see where you're coming from. I also think it's like an epic boss. I don't know. That is very yeah. true. We also had to do it. We also had it before the, uh, like the BDG macro week aura thing was out. So we were, we literally, everybody who had a second monitor in our guild had a raid plan open up on their second monitor for the first like hundred pulls of this boss. <laughs> and it was just, all right, everybody open your textbooks to page five. Here's where our positions are for this, you know, overlap set. It was uh, not good. Like imagine making an entire room full of walls with the ability with multiple mechanics to break a bunch of walls at once. And the version that you designed made people have to figure out one person to just break one small portion of a wall and everyone else had to shoot theirs into the wall and do nothing on purpose. Like that's, it's insane. Like that, that had to be just such clear failure of design. Hey, Growl, did you, did you, what was your opinion on Echo? Um, so I think Teapot's suggestion actually is pretty insane. And I think the idea of when, whenever they want to do private auras where you sort of have to like do something very specific very quickly, I think assigning them some sort of color or some sort of small differentiator to allow guilds to, uh, you know, preemptively decide what to do instead of it being like really, really crazy and trying, like, I get that sort of what they were going for, but I actually think going forward because, you know, there's the private aura and M plus thing top being talked about now too. I think they need to, uh, you know, think about that sort of thing. And I actually like his defense that, you know, that was really the main mechanic of the fight that was bad, but it very easily could have been changed to then good. I would say the other thing I really didn't like about the fight, and maybe it's a healer thing about staring at my frames, I really feel like the debuffs and the things on the ground were really, really claustrophobic. And again, I get that they're going for that on the fight, but like, 
if I ever, if you have, if you play a class that has like a very complex rotation where you're like not always staring at your character, or if you're playing a healer and you're staring at your frames, I hate when there's constantly like circles going under me or things that are going under me that I don't have to worry about. Like the the circles, the volcanic heart or whatever would just constantly be around my character, and I'd be like like over and over again, like looking up and be like, oh no, like am I in the wrong spot? Like is there something going on? It's like nope. Well, this circle is just ginormous, and there's five of them, and they're all running around, and it's just like I feel like that fight really suffered from visual clutter and a lot of the fights in uh the second rate of the expansion were just like red on red on dark red with red circles and it's like really hard to differentiate what i needed to worry about and focus on and what i didn't need to yeah be immersed it has to be red it has to be red circles the entire time and blue on sakura very important yeah, I I think I think that's something that's like a larger conversation that we could get into another time. But I I do think it's interesting about how Blizzard stands, how strongly they stand on this mechanic needs to like like Smolderon, right? Smolderon's a red boss, mm. and he's a Fire Lord, and the ground is red, and all his abilities are red. And it's like yeah, from a pure like gameplay perspective, having things be purely different colors, almost like reticles on the ground, would be easier to dodge and more visually clear, but also Blizzard cares absolutely way too much about theme for that to ever happen, right? Yeah, So yeah, like, I agree. Uh, so, yeah, it's definitely an interesting conversation and, and how a lot of MMOs differ. All right, Growl, what is your, uh, what is your 10? Uh, my number 10 is Primal Council. Whoa! It's so the, the Vault of the Incarnate's Council. No, okay, no one else has that on their list, correct? Nope. Fucking, okay. What is, what is, explain. All right, so I think Primal Console was a really, really good early pug boss in the sense that it had a really, really good item that everyone needed, and you sort of needed to go to that boss and you needed to pug it. And I thought it was pretty well designed in the sense that there wasn't really any like instant raid wiping mechanics that would like kill you. Like you could be you could be in a group with a bunch of zoo animals, and I feel like people would like slowly progress that boss and learn. I feel like all of the mechanics were like pretty independent and pretty straightforward in terms of like didn't require crazy coordination or any weak auras. Um, I also think that just mm -hmm. it was a sort of a patchwork style boss, and that you just blast AOE and you just do a lot of damage and same healing wise like there's a lot of pillars and you just blast aoe healing um i think i i could understand why dps might not like it because i feel like if you have really good four target cleave you just blast everything and you probably look really good so maybe that's why i i guess i i never really i didn't see people not like that boss what did you guys not like well about it? i think you mentioned dps i i think a feeling as a dps on primal council that doesn't feel good is like especially as a melee the earthen pillar is far away from you and someone keeps passing you a debuff and you have to keep running off the boss to drop that thing off and then run back and then continually do that over and over again because of someone else's movement mistake or your own i think that was I like ranged yeah I so ranged maybe maybe a yeah i think ranged like doesn't deal with that nearly as much but i also think that primal council is in a long line of bosses and even in a boss that happened after this that were like i would just describe as like mechanic vomit you could see something like uh council of dreams um what is the one in uh, prototype pantheon and primal council all seem the same where they have a few bosses that have mechanics that are two of the bosses at least will have like mechanics that interact with each other and you're just supposed to like figure that out and make that work they all just end up being bosses you stack up really fast uh, maybe a positive of this is those bosses usually die in like four minutes or less even like for a first kill um which is kind of interesting you can kind of limp for a while with a lot of people dying i think you brought up a good point the like i think it was of a lot of value that for someone who's trying to get efficient raid loot in vault of the incarnates you could get any group together and you could kill Aranog, and if you could kill Aranog, you could definitely kill this. And then you got, like, two bosses with very rare loot. Back when very rare loot was actually, like, really, really good. And, like, now you just had, like, this perfect box that you could loot every week, and that was, like, easily repeatable. So I think for a lot of people who didn't raid farther into the raid, and that's their only experience in Mythic especially, I think it would get a lot of positive points because, you know, that's just, like, an enjoyable thing. But I just found Primal Council to just be like not even seem like a raid boss almost it was just like a meme like i thought about putting mm -hmm. assault of zakali on my list for the same reason but it's like because you never who had a bad time on assault of zakali it was just like but it was just kind of nothing at the same time you know uh i don't know yeah as a as a quick defense though you mentioned the idea of mechanic vomit or basically bosses where the mechanics don't necessarily interact i think that's not necessarily a bad thing especially for early bosses and early expansion bosses because a lot of times the really really heavy pressure points and complicated points and points that need weak auras and points that people hate 
are when you have really, really nasty overlaps where it's like, oh, no, you know, how do you deal with this and this? And I feel like they don't necessarily need, you know, bosses that just have like one by one straightforward mechanics. Like when I think of mechanic vomit, I think of just like so much stuff going on that it like hurts your brain. But I actually think that boss is like pretty just sequential of like, okay, you do this, okay, you dip in the fire, okay, now you clear. And it's like, it's not really like that many crazy overlaps or like, I feel like no matter what's happening in that fight, it's pretty it's pretty transparent you like know exactly what's happening to you and what you should be doing mm. yeah i think uh I, you know it's, it's funny you know i think for some reason i get the impression that council bosses are somewhat unpopular in the in the wow community i think that seems to be the case i'm kind of an enjoyer of them a little bit um it kind of for the reason that you listed as a as a downside almost max i kind of like the chaos actually of the fights uh mm. that are a little bit like this i think that's actually really fun sometimes i the I'd probably, if I was going to say, where do I think counselors, it's hard for me. I'm a little inexperienced, of course, because uh, I have cleared it on Mythic, but only in Awakened, right? So it kind of just fell over because the tuning is pretty different to the original version of that, right? It's Awakened, so it's weird, right? That All one that was pretty stuff. similar to difficulty okay. to how it was the yeah, first okay. time. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, it, it just kind of kind of died a little bit, um, which, you know, it's cool. But I guess the, the thing that I find a bit strange about it is I'm not really a huge fan of council fights where you just stack them. That to me is kind of weird, right? It's like, well, what's mm the point in having multiple bosses if they all just kind of stack together and you just you just blast them down right um I, I, and i think that i think it can be kind of fun especially if you you know you don't get any mechanics as a dps you just see a crazy big number right? like oh yeah this is awesome this is really really fun um but i i think that um one thing i do like about council and i think you see this in council of dreams as well is the fact that you use the boss's abilities against them i, I think that's really fun concept actually it's really enjoyable to me when you have stuff like that uh, in some of these encounters but yeah I, 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 it doesn't make the top 10 for me but i think um some of these fights it's, it's, it's pretty solid i'm I, I'd, I'd say i'm a, an enjoyer of of council bit of a council enjoyer myself well, I want to, well, before Dratnos gives his take on this, I want to say one thing about the council thing. The Warcraft community doesn't really like council. I think for a long time, there were a bunch of really good council fights. And then it just became like a thing where it's like, okay, there has to be a council fight in every raid. Like you can kind of tell mm. when Blizzard's making a raid and they're coming up with ideas for bosses. It's almost like a checklist. Like, okay, we have a council boss. It's felt like council bosses were just a requirement for a raid for a long time and didn't have a lot of inspiration behind them. Uh, where we used to have really good ones, like Throne of Thunder, Council of Blood, Twilight Ascendant Council, which people are going to do in the first tier of uh, Cataclysm coming out in a couple of weeks, or uh, when the raids come out in a couple of weeks, I think. What is it? Council of Blood and Castle Nathry. It just seems like they've been mailing in the Council boss for a while. It is interesting you mention having them spread out, because Forgotten Experiments was a clear design angle where they were like okay how do we do a council boss differently and then they made forgotten experiments the way it was right like i think that's a direct result of that um the reason council of dreams are not fully stacked and those other two bosses move randomly is purely for the exact same reason you're talking about it's a design goal for them that it's like hey maybe they shouldn't always just be able to be stacked in the past you've had bosses like council of blood where you kill one of the three of the council and the other two heal the full and gain abilities and stuff like they've done council bosses well and i think that's why i rate primal council and council of dreams so low is because i think they're really ineffective versions of council fights versus ones we've had in the past which obviously you can't have that perspective because you didn't do a lot of them right you're just seeing a wow version of a council boss which on its own isn't bad um but yeah uh, Dratnos, what is your what's your take on the old primal council? I agree with pretty much everything that Growl said about it. It's just for me, that's not what I'm like when I'm making my list of these bosses. How much of kind of ease of farm and how enjoyable my two out of nine or two out of eight mythic alt run or whatever is on it. That's something that is I I don't wait very much at all when I'm thinking about like what are my favorite bosses. Like for me, a boss doing well on, on the list is is going to be because it was like good during mythic progression um which you know a second boss can be and i have second bosses on my list but primal council wasn't anything like that for me right primal council on uh, mythic progression had very little uh going on for me and then on farm i think yeah it's it's a great it's a great farm experience i mean vaulted incarnate farm had some problems actually because terrorist was a pretty fun boss you didn't want to pull because it would brick your vault but the side of it where you would just do aranog primal council and then get some juicy loot uh was really cool that was that was nice it's just not what's important to me about a raid so it's not what i'm making my list based off of okay yeah not to cut dry nose off but i kind of noticed that with my list too is we were doing the dungeons last week i cared very much about oh how it was designed and i tried to like do all these different like calculations about like what is prog like and what is it like for all these different guilds and then when i was doing this list i was just like you know 
I'm not really a raider, so I'm just. This is what I think. This is what I don't care if it was only fun for a healer. I don't care if it was miserable for range. I don't care what design they were going for. I'm just like purely ranking it based off of like how much fun I had. That is the, exactly what I wanted you to do. They, believe yeah, me, well, which is funny because I think it was sort of the opposite for you guys last time, where it was like I feel like Max is going to be really into the design of the bosses and like he was in every step in PTR. Whereas in the dungeons, it's like sorry, excuse me. Uh, you know, you're just like, well, I played this for a couple weeks when I was pushing keys. How did I feel about it? Yeah. Kind of cool, I guess. I mean, there will be a boss on my list that is almost <laughs> certainly not on any one of yours, and it will be entirely because of my experience with it. So, um, all right, let's, uh, let's move on. Uh, my number nine is, and I actually, this was a late addition because for some reason in my mind, I like ignored all of the first bosses and kind of threw them all together in each raid because I just felt like... I don't know, just all of the first bosses in Dragonflight were kind of just really good first bosses. Like, they often can do first bosses bad. I don't think any of them were, like, unbelievably good, but it's kind of hard for a first boss to be that good. Uh, but yeah, I, I put I put down Kazara, uh, the first boss on Avarice. I just think it's one of the best first bosses they've made. It's simple to the point, single target. The, like, beam mechanic and getting rid of the rifts was cool. Uh, it wasn't super hard, but it's not supposed to be. Uh, I feel like if you could kill Kazara at least as like a pug player looking for that three box, you could absolutely have killed uh, at least Zakali and maybe Amalgamation Chamber, right? So I don't know. Big fan of Kazara. Uh, did any of you, any of you guys have Kazara on your list at all? I have it higher. All right. Dratnos, what's your nine? Aranog. Another first boss. Okay. Does anyone, That's right. Does anyone else have Aranog on their list? Uh, I actually also had Aranog as my nine. Oh, so base. Okay. So we'll talk about that when we get it, uh, get to yours. All right. Teapot, what's your nine? My ninth is Teros. Oh, I have Taros significantly. I have it higher, I have it higher, I have it higher. Yep. All right. That is good. Uh, Growl, and your nine is Aranog. All right. Either one yep. of you take it away. All right. Well, I'll, I'll sort of echo what I said about Primal Council as well. I think it's just a, a good, like, pretty straightforward, like, pug boss. And I also agree with your your comment about how almost all of the, first, like, early, like, the early bosses of the raid were pretty good. And so I kind of wanted to just pick which one I thought was my favorite to include. But it's kind of hard to rank it high because it's an early boss. I would say the reason I like this boss over Kazara is that I feel like the, or, or I don't know, you know, Dragon Cross, but... Uh, I think the portals sort of like create this like weird opportunity to like grief other people like the fact that like you're relying on other people to like put your line through and like I don't know it feels like it's not really coordination but it just kind of like usually first bosses are like beat turn brain off and like slam the boss and like do mechanics and it, it can be annoying when other people don't care they like you know going the portal that you were going for they place a portal like in a really really dumb spot it's just kind of like a more frustrating boss to pug whereas Aranog is like I don't know like very very straightforward like you know you just kind of do your thing nuke the ads kill the boss it's like you know again not really anything crazy it doesn't require weak auras dratty yeah so i will say like i'm not you know president of the aranog fan club or anything it's worth noting there are only like 27 bosses here in this expansion so you know the bottom of this list had to include has to these are basically like slightly above average bosses right um compared mm -hmm. to the average would be like 14th place or something this expansion um but I do think Aranog is uh, it's a pretty fun one. You know, you get a you get a nice burn. It's uh, I think for a first boss, it's a good intro to the raid. So yeah, no uh, no complaints no, yeah. here. And Not in this say. expansion, like as we start getting below, actually as we start getting below number nine, we start getting to the bosses that I have huge complaints about, which includes even uh, even Raz. Uh, okay, yeah, we have uh. I, I also think Aranog gets some points for just looking sick as fuck. Yeah. You know, like, like just doing the first intermission and, like, the mobs going in and out of the, like, in a circle in a line. I don't know. That's just, that just looks sick. And I, I think some of the bosses here actually got points for me for being visually really impressive. Um, all right, cool. Shout out Aranog. Uh, my number eight is Fyrak. I have it higher. I also have it higher. All righty. Uh, Dratnos, what is your eight? <laughs> Kazara. Okay. Is this the, this is the highest anyone has Kazara. Is that correct? I believe so. Take it away. Kazara yeah, was a sick first boss, actually. If anything, I kind of wish I put this thing higher. Like, the, as far as first bosses go, this maybe was a little hard um, for a lot of groups, right? Like, they, you actually had to do, like, the gameplay of Kazara. I remember doing Kazara on PTR when it was kind of tuned a little higher and stuff. And you're like, oh my god, there's actually, there's some real boss mechanics here, right? Like, painting the rifts and room conservation and, like, strategizing where you were moving around there. And then I remember at the start of the, like, the first day of Abers, we were hearing that, like, oh my god, guilds are taking, like, 20 pulls to kill Kazara. 
you know, what is this boss? It's kind of crazy. Then we, we ended up like one shotting it or whatever, and obviously it wasn't actually that bad. What a flex! Everybody... Crazy flex. We're actually. not. We're, we're pretty good. Also, we had gear and stuff. That yeah, this be... is just no yeah. problem for you guys. Yeah, exactly. It was really easy. And then uh, we were we were gonna go for world first, but we decided to let you guys have it that tier. Yeah, because we felt bad. But um, yeah. Anyways, the boss was fun. I don't know. It's a fun one. It, it created as well. One of the things we liked about Aranog Primal Council was the dynamic. Again, I'm not rating at all based off of this, so this wasn't at all relevant for how I was. I made this list, but it is a nice thing about the boss is that if you could kill the first boss, you could get a vault out of this raid. I think that was true in all of these, all three raids of this expansion. That was nice because there have been some in the past. Like if you go back to Battle of Dazarlor, if you could kill oh, Champions yeah. of the Light, you very likely could not kill Grong or Jadefire Masters, right? Like the amount of groups that could kill Champion of the Light, you could get a good solid five player Mythic Plus team into that raid and they could kill Champion of the Light, right? Like you didn't need the other 15 people, but Grong and Jadefire Masters were both pretty hard, right? Um, but yeah, nice thing about, about Kazara was that it was actually harder than Assault, right? It's harder than Amalgamation Chamber. It gave you a, a guaranteed Z's vault for your, uh, your alt runs, or you didn't get saved, which shout out to, they should change the mythic lockout system, but yeah, anyway. I mean, what a testament to how bad the mythic lockout system yeah. is that that's something that you actually consider when you're like yeah. thinking about the boss is like, okay, well, you know, I'm not going to get stuck when I join a pug because the first boss is the hardest boss of the three. Like what a ridiculous. Yeah. Um, I, they made a UI element change to like how the raid info tab looks and everything recently. And like the first thing I did when I looked on it was to see if there was like any like mythic raid lockout changes. They, a, a topic for a different stream, but that is one of the most ancient things that still exists in WoW and is a big problem. Um, Terrace, what's your, or, uh, Teapot, do you have any Terrace. takes on Kazara? Um, yeah, I think that, I guess I will just put this on the table. I'm going to admit that I'm going to, I have a bias kind of against the earlier bosses, I would say, because, uh, they aren't hard enough, uh, to, to an extent. And I, I like the more complicated encounters. Uh, I think Kazara is very solid though, actually. In, in fact, I'd say a lot of the, the early bosses are like very, very solid. And that's kind of like a, some of the reason that I have with Taros, right? Like, it's just good it's just it's fun to play i'd say the same thing about uh null root as well i think actually in in emidrasil too it's just pretty good it's, yeah uh but you know that's it's not quite what i'm uh looking for i guess like in a in a rating experience and i would say yeah you know this is fun i'm down let's just you know let's go get a kazara done let's go uh, and it was definitely a fun introduction. It was, of course, the first mythic uh, boss that I ever encountered uh, in World of Warcraft. And I definitely do like the beam mechanic. I think that's really, really cool. Uh, just that, yeah, I mean, I would, I, you know, the, the, the way I see a lot of these earlier encounters, I go like, oh, man, if only this was the seventh or eighth boss. This is you know, like, let's go. Let's crank it up. Let's dial up to 11. Let's have some fun with this. And <laughs> yeah, that, that's kind of my commentary on a lot of the earlier encounters in, in some of these raids. Uh, all right, cool. We have a... Uh... Uh, what is your eight, by the way? What's your next one? Uh, I think this one will be, uh, this is going to be a fun one. This is a, this is a bit spicy, maybe. Uh, I actually, on reflecting, in the hour you gave me, I reflected upon all of the fights. And I decided that this list actually needed to have uh, Ziskan on it. And that is my eight for the top ten. I have Scarn higher. We'll be talking about it later. Oh. Very nice. I have scarred much, much, much lower, so that evens all out. <laughs> it all evens out, yeah. All right, Grell, what is uh Grell, what is your eight? Uh my number eight is Forgotten Experiments. Ooh, I was not expecting Ooh. that. Does anyone else have this? Okay. What's your I don't what's I almost your... wish I had now. Ooh, okay. all right. So I like the thing that I like most about Forgotten Experiments is I sort of like the pacing of it. I feel like generally a fight that gets harder and harder and harder doesn't really work that well unless it's like somewhat simple and somewhat easy. And I kind of feel like it's just a fun overall fight with a lot of different mechanics. And towards the end, the I, I really like mechanics. I would describe them as sort of like nerve checks of something that takes very little coordination. That's not very tough, but like, you know, when your guild is about to kill the boss and like, you know, there are three people dead and you're like, you know, like they fall apart and it's like, you know, so for instance, the orbs that you just have to like bounce that are doing damage as well as just the dragon when he flies around the room or whatever. I feel like it's just a sort of a well-paced fight where like the... It gets harder as it goes on, but the complexity sort of doesn't, like, it doesn't get too crazy or complex at the end. Um, in terms of, like, the strategy, I know there's probably, like, different stuff that you can do, and I don't really care about that, because every guild that isn't Liquid or Echo just copies everybody, so I know there might be some people that don't like it, because, like, 
you know, there's missed opportunity or whatever. But overall, I find it's like a pretty fun fight to heal. It's a pretty well paced fight. I, I also kind of like the the decisions that you get with the debuffs as well. I know is I know like high end guilds probably just like mass dispel to every specific stacks at specific sizes. But I kind of like the idea from a healer perspective that like, oh man, I have no defensives. Like I'm just gonna drop my debuff and just throw it to somebody else because I'm in I'm gonna be in trouble or like I'm not even gonna stand in the mass dispel because I have. I have like defensives and I'm going to hold on to it. I feel like there's a little bit of like individual decision making that you can make that impacts the raid, but it's not really like, uh, you know, you just wipe the raid because of it. Like worst case, you just like die or whatever. I, I think forgotten experiments I said this earlier on primal council. I think it is a direct result of there being two council fights in a row that were like stack everything up and blast it in prototype pantheon and primal council. And they were like, from a very beginning design decision, they were like, okay, we're going to make this fight, but it is definitely not going to do that. So they did the like coming out at half thing. One positive I have from this is it is cool that your decision on when to lust and on what boss you lost, which happened to just be one of the first ones, but like killing one of the bosses had more value than killing the others. Cause you wanted to stop a mechanic that was going to kind of ramp for the rest of the fight. I like that. It was like, okay, we have to kill this boss as fast as possible while not getting overrun. A small negative I would take away is something very similar, which is you said it kind of ramps in difficulty. I think it actually ramps in difficulty right up until the moment that the second boss dies, and I think mm -hmm. it gets significantly easier. Like, the end of the boss when uh, you're just knocking the orbs away and dodging the breath is easier than when, like, the previous guy is out and you still have to worry about having the orbs dead before he casts that, like, violent scream spell or whatever the fuck it is. Like, that, that part wasn't good for me. Like, we... And we were, again, one of the people who got to strategize this, and usually fights like this are better because of that, but I just found that process, like, really tedious. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I just think it was... I think it's just another... For me, it's another one of the really forgettable whatever council fights, and I wish they would go back to making really, really good ones, because I think really good council fights are, like, a hallmark of raiding. They're just as necessary to every raid, in my opinion, a good council fight as, like, a really good sludge fist patchworky type fight. Rashok, right? Which I'm sure we'll talk about later. Uh... So I, I just just bring back good council fights is my is my take and that is why you will see zero council fights on my list today. I yeah, want to add I, about I, I, yeah. okay. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, go no, ahead. No, no, no. After you, after you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, no, I, I think that um, forgotten experiments. I, I, th I think it might be maybe my favorite implementation of, of council fights in, in this expansion actually because it does have that element of yeah you stack them together but you also so you have to deal with both the mechanics simultaneously you do have the decision making on the lust timing what kind of brings it down for me is I find it really weird that when you would push the boss to 50% would actually change. Um, it, it would kind of offset some of the timers, right? So you could kind of sk uh, skip one of the bombs in phase two. I, I, that stuff is kind of weird to me. I, I'm not a huge fan of that. And I found the orbs to be pretty gimmicky uh, overall, actually. But yeah, I certainly didn't hate it. Um, I, I actually agree with a lot of the, the positives that have been discussed about here uh, when it comes to like a council fight implementation, for sure. Yeah, I, I, I agree that the... It's a big downside for me that the way that you kind of do that fight, like if you're actually undergeared, if you're trying to kill it with as high success chance as possible, involved like, oh, you got to wait till 43 seconds in the fight to make your push or whatever, right? And like, you're stopping DPS, you're looking at it to make sure you can do that. That was uh, something that we did during progression on that fight, which, you know, even though it's only like five or 10 pulls or whatever, it's still, you know, saving you time, right? And then we did it all through farm until, like, every time we killed that boss on farm, except for until we killed Zarkareth, we were doing that. Uh, cringe, stop DPS, you know? Mm. Not just hold cooldowns, which I think is fine, but stop DPS, not fine. Yeah, yike. I, I, I hate Forgotten Experiments, man. <laughs> I hate that fight. Uh, this was also a boss that also just... <laughs> wow it, it it just it tore a new hole in your tanks man that was uh, oh it did was, it uh, really did wild. and yeah. and it uh it would your tanks could i don't know if you guys had tanks like this uh that like griefed your raid like it's definitely one of those ones where like tank positioning exact tank positioning most yeah. of the time on most fights because they don't have to think about it tanks kind of just like wander on top of each other a lot but <laughs> if you do that on this fight you just destroy the raid once uh once pings came out though this i i started using i had a macro that pinged my co tank so i would just see where they were i could like gps onto them uh for clearing and that i swear that tech is so good you guys got to start using that if you're yeah ever, you are uh, the you are like the president of the ping association pings are insane man they're so yeah. good i mean i tried to say that like as soon as it came out like i remember when pings came out mid patch like not new content mid patch i remember there being so much 
negativity towards them. They were like, oh, pings. It's like, yeah, it's cool, but like just use raid markers and stuff. And I'm like, guys, just wait until new content comes out and you like start thinking about things with pings as a problem solving option and it's going to be the shit. And I was right. Let's go. So I'm, I'm part of the cabinet for your, uh, for your crew. Vice um, president of pings. That's yep. good. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, the other thing as well, this is one of the few fights that got harder in Awakened because you don't have Master Spell anymore. <laughs> like Master Spell, you've Master Spell oh, once. Oh, true. Or Has that been, been so weird trying to like yeah. single the spell? I did uh, like an alt run or whatever with some of, some of your guildies actually, and they they this fight we like wiped to five times or something on that run, which it's uh, oh that that's didn't, tragic. Didn't used to happen because it used it used to just be go to blue get MD, and now it's go to blue and do single the spells, and you can't trust two of the healers. Oh yeah, we learned button. from Firak you can't quite trust healers with with that. Although. Yeah. Although Firak was a just the worst thing ever for healers in P1, but my seven, I'm interested to see if you guys have this. I doubt it. Maybe Teapot does, um, but I really doubt Growl will, and maybe Dratnos will just because he's based. Um, it is Laridar. Does anyone have Come Laridar? Come on. What? You're making fun of my list, and you have Laridar on your. Yo, you got to hear me out. And keep in mind, this is a boss that we killed in like seven pulls. But uh, I'm assuming no one else has Laridar, right? Good assumption. No Laridar. Okay, I good deception. I love Lairdar. I think Lairdar is the best version ever that they've made of a healer fight. A fight where there is a mechanic where you have to heal up things uh, throughout, you know, like uh, Sun King's Blessing or way back in the day, that one ICC Green Dragon boss or uh, Su Long. Healer bosses in general, I think this is the best one they've ever made. I think any negatives with it is going to be kind of like I enjoy the harder bosses angle where you're like you get to this bar. I think we killed this boss in eight tries, seven tries or something like that. But the pro like the actual strategizing for this fight was really interesting when you would push how many phases you would want to do. The only thing that missed for me on Laridar was the last phase of the fight could have been a lot better and I wish it was more hectic. Like, I wish I wish you had to kill Laridar at the end and, like, you're fighting against time, either through unseeable trees or something. Like, basically, if Laridar was, like, a later boss in the raid, I think it would have been cool. But, like, I wanted to include it because I really enjoyed the problem-solving process for it. Even though it died really fast, I thought it was really cool and really good, and I want to encourage Blizzard for coming up with cool new creative boss ideas like this in the future and execute on them well, which I think Laridar did, and it only suffered from being not really tuned at a high level like some other early bosses in this raid were all right so laridar in theory if you're a group of people who is 20 people that care about completing the boss and you're working together as a team laridar could be a fine boss the problem is everyone that plays this game is a zoo animal and laridar is literally the definition of a boss where x person didn't do their job and we just immediately wipe and go again over and over and over oh the healer didn't heal the bramble we're dead oh this guy didn't do the hose we're dead oh this tank pointed this way you're dead it's just literally a fight where you feel like you have so little control as a single player and it's just so like frustrating on top of that, by far, the most frustrating thing for me in that fight is, okay, so you have the hose. And the way the hose worked is you would have three people that were assigned to connect to each other and then run around the room and clear the lava, right? But the problem is, oh, I'm a warlock. I don't want to move around. I got to cast demons. And so you're, I'm sitting here and I hook up to the hose and I hook up to the warlock and he's just standing there in the middle of the room just casting stuff over and over. And it's like, dude, please, can we clear the room? And we're just half of the hose is gone and the warlock is just has an army of demons and he hasn't moved one inch and it's just i don't know that fight i i just don't like anything about that fight maybe it's because i'm in drogo's guild but i i just feel like it's just so frustrating it feels like you have so little control and it's like i don't know i hate fights where you have to heal ads i hate fights where you have to rely on other people or the raid wipes and i get if you're gonna have like a really difficult end of like raid boss where you know everyone has to do their job like that's totally acceptable on like you know the last boss of the raid or the second boss but Deb's just i don't know i feel like it's just such a wipe fest on farm because everyone's trying to pad <laughs> how did you feel about the uh like targeting of the friendlies to heal oh yeah that wasn't good. um I didn't, so I, this is, this is, it's not like an advertisement, but I recently switched to sell raid frames and they do a much better job than anything I had before with, uh, friendly stuff. So I actually don't have a problem now on Awaken, but I hated it in, uh, Prague. Okay, yeah, because I remember for a healer boss, one that all the healers hated was something that was a lot of negative points. True. From my perspective. True. Yeah. I love how every, I love how every healer hates this boss and then Max leads with, so this is the greatest implementation of a healer boss they've ever made. Yeah, I guess I wasn't coming at that from a healer's perspective 
objective, but I consider this boss. <laughs> this is my favorite yeah. healer boss as a DPS player because there's one well, little tiny not a DPS that player. the has to heal, so that makes it a healer it's boss. It's more just, okay, I I'll think stop. this is the best executed boss that was designed to be like what I would consider a healer boss. But yeah, I definitely do understand the getting on there. But also you're saying like, well, I just have a warlock that doesn't move, but like that's just like one point of communication where, okay, we had people who were not really mobile or didn't want to move like there are some classes that are great at moving and some that aren't right so like we had our warlocks do the thing too but they were just the first point of the chain so they had to do the least amount of movement and then you would, if you were sitting there waiting for him you could have been like hey man you click the seed next time and i'll chain off you and like you just stand there and i'll run around and clear the fire right oh so, i like, communicated to them oh i did okay i think this might be a drogo guild bit but <laughs> <laughs> maybe uh teapot Lardo was, uh, was yeah Lardo was on it was on my short list actually for this i was kind of umming and ahhing if i was wanted to uh to slap it on the list uh somewhere uh, i think and you know maybe you know it, it was it was a really tough decision because i actually do really like this style of encounter uh, i love the space management aspect of it uh, and then when you get to phase two right you know the the, tr the trees are moving in uh but it, it didn't quite deliver for me i think especially in phase two and I, I think some of this is because obviously i get to these encounters significantly later than you guys so obviously we're, we're a bit more juiced up and the bosses kind of die and this is what i felt about emirdris in particular actually a lot of the early bosses just kind of like oh we did it oh nice yeah good job guys uh, and you know before it ramped up significantly when you get to kind of the the ending uh, part of the raid there as well um but yeah just a, a very solid fight I, I don't have anything super negative to to comment about larada um uh, to be honest and i think that um if yeah I, it, it would probably make like a top 15 for me but maybe not quite which is almost 10. all the bosses in the expansion by the way but all yeah good. for sure um, yeah yeah i i think that I, th I think these lists are really difficult to do for that reason Okay. The, the list um, is not... Yeah, like, I thought about that, too. Like, you could have done a top five. I did a top ten because Harumared did a top ten. But really, the content in this isn't the lists of ten. It And you guys probably know this. It's the discussion that you have about the bosses when they come up. That's, 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 that is what is interesting about this. So, um, so all good, all good there. All right, Dratty, what is your seven? Taros. Uh, I have Taros higher. Okay, Teapot, what is your seven? Number seven is... Actually, and this is, I will say that Maybe I have to swap this out if Heroic Takes are not allowed. But actually, uh, Razagath, the Storm Eater, is number seven for me. I think Heroic Takes should be like, it's whatever metrics you... Yeah, that's totally fine. Like, yeah, I, I, I would wholeheartedly agree that Heroic Razagath yeah, is... I wanted if to you put... enjoy, like, Mythic rating, Heroic Razagath is the best Heroic boss they've ever made. Yeah, actually, entirely right. I thought about that, and I didn't think it would be, like, super relatable. It would be weird to, like, rank literally every other boss based on Mythic. But then when one of the bosses was horrible on Mythic but happened to be a great Heroic boss... You would say Razageth, but specifically heroic, right? Uh, just to double check, this is the highest Razageth is on the on the list, right? I think I think so. All right, what is what was your experience with Razageth, Mister Teapot? So, um, obviously, I actually did watch the Race to Worlds first, so I kind of had a, a little bit of an impression of what's going on. And and actually, after I kind of uh, talk about this from my side, I would actually love because love to hear uh, why Mythic exactly why Mythic like sucked so bad, like mm -hmm. from, from your perspective, that would be super interesting. Um. But yeah, to me, it's just a really cool epic fight. I actually like the uh, intermissions uh, quite a lot, actually. In particular, uh, where you have to block the ads uh, from crossing over and healing each other. I, th I think that type of thing is really cool, that kind of coordination check um, with the, the ads teleporting out. I think that's really fun. Uh, I enjoy the heroic mechanic uh, a whole lot, um, where you're getting pulled, right? And you have to manipulate the position of the pull, stuff like that. I also like that the one thing that um, this happens in a couple of the raids, actually, I like it where the tank. Uh, if the tank doesn't mitigate correctly, everyone takes a lot more damage. This is kind of a interesting thing. Uh, I, I'm actually, this is a kind of a kind of uh, derailing here a little bit. But one of the complaints I have about um, uh, raiding, and I think this is a late cutting edge perspective, is that tanking is too easy, and that you don't get punished mm. for mistakes nearly enough as tanking. Um, actually, um, I think. You definitely feel differently, actually, perhaps if I raided at a higher level, obviously, but that's something that I, I do like about stuff like Horror at Razageth. If you kind of mess up, then you might end up killing other people. I think that's really good. Uh, yeah, just all around. I think it's cool. Uh, I like it's a it's a fight that's got a lot to it, some coordination checks. I'm a Guild Wars 2 player, so I actually love stuff like the Wing Buffet getting pushed off and having to use movement skills and all kinds of crazy stuff to hang onto the platform. That's really fun to me. I think some of that is, uh, is really cool, yeah. Big fan. Um... I'll probably get into, like, he wanted to hear my perspective after, uh, so I'll probably do that after you guys uh, give your takes on the old Razzy G. Wait, before you do that, actually, you mentioned tanking being easy. That, yeah. that is not a hot take. It's actually, and I don't know how they can solve this, but it is part of the issue with tanking and raid. 
Like, tanking a Mythic Plus is awesome. You're, like, much more challenged, mainly mm, due to infinitely yeah. scaling mob damage and stuff. Uh, and then if you aren't challenged, you can just pull bigger, right? Um, but in Raid, they have run into the issue where, like, it just gets easier over time. Like, by the time you did this raid, and by the time most people do this raid, tanks have, like, a ton of gear. Uh, mm -hmm. Where, like, one difference in that is, like, for world first progression, when you're doing this week one and tanks are the lowest priority for gear, and you are expected to multi-class every other possible class in your role, which is not true of any other role, that's, you, you need, like, at the world first level, you need your absolute best players tanking. Uh, and even a rank not even too far below that, I don't, I'm, I don't want to make up a number, tanks become a lower priority instantly. And I wonder how they could ever close that gap in, in rating where it exists in Mythic Plus, like, effortlessly. But, yeah, that, that's something that's an issue in the game for sure. Not to derail too much, but just to answer that before if they talked about Razageth. Yeah. There you have it. Tanks are bad. True. True. Yeah. True. It's uh, directly below my guild is where <laughs> tanks are allowed to be bad, but... <laughs> Once you're in my guild, that's where it's important. <laughs> Tanks are really important and powerful. And powerful. And your best players. Yeah, yeah. they have to be. Actually, I and think I can get behind that, 100%. I think we'd have our healers. I am the best, best player in my guild. If we could choose, I think it'd be healer. Maybe it'd be tanks. Honestly, like if your tanks are bad, they, they have the easiest job, but every time they screw up, your raid wipes. I don't know. Like that's true, and not just Razagath. That's true in a lot of fights. Um, Razagath, okay. I agree the heroic heroic version of this fight was really sweet. Mythic had a couple of problems that hold it back for me, but I did put this on my list as well in 10. Like there was a lot of fun on Razagath. One problem with Mythic was that the calibration of the difficulty of the different phases was quite far off. The first phase was really hard, but it was actually kind of fun. The first intermission was really hard. They nerfed it by like 60% between race world first starting and when my guild killed the boss but it was still really hard for us like that was still a phase we wiped i think the most in the second phase was i think perfectly tuned and yep, fun true a and then the second intermission was just it wasn't particularly hard but it was extremely tedious and it was a little hard and it was you know seven years into the fight or something so by the time you got there you were everybody was tired you know you had to go to bed you had to do shifts of napping and waking up so that you could make it through the fight and uh, then you got to the third phase, which was cool, but was also undertuned. So you didn't actually get that much satisfying phase three progression in a phase that offered, I think, quite a lot conceptually. And then it just kind of fell over once you got your first pull where you did 80% of it right. And that is kind of fundamentally unsatisfying for a phase that had such high potential. So, yeah, I mean, again, not, not an awful fight. There were, there were a lot of stuff going for it, but... The downsides were also pretty big. Yeah, for it had end boss. it had negative uh, like skill or like uh, difficulty ramping. It started off the phase. It started off the fight with the hardest phase, and then as the fight went on, it just got easier and easier. And that's just a strange dynamic that makes would make any boss bad. But you did point out something, Dratnos, that I think is interesting, which is that P two actually is a good phase. I think that is yeah. lost in a lot of Razageth Mythic discussion is like the whole fight is bad, but Ra the second phase of Razageth Mythic was like, I want to I want to say like maybe what they designed the fight for and then made the other phases work, because like that phase is just perfect. Like everything about it is great. Um, but yeah, I'll give, uh, Growl, what was your Razageth? Did you do Razageth? Uh, I did like a little bit. I don't have a lot to say like about it. I think, uh, I don't know. It was just kind of whatever. They, Boss is too hard. they designed that fight to be done, uh, it was really interesting. They'd never done this before. They gave Evoker a bunch of new, like, brand new unique utility as a new class in the expansion. And then they designed the first end boss so aggressively to make use of the utility that they had, right? Uh, they deliberately made two classes completely unable to do the fight unless you had an Evoker pick them up and carry them. Which I think if you were to ask a Paladin or a Priest player what it was like doing Razageth early on, like, is absolute hell. Like, talk about waiting for other people to not mess up. Like, if a dragon just forgot to pick you up, you would just fall off the edge and die, and it would look like your fault. Like, it was pretty miserable in that way. Um, but if you, you asked why I specifically didn't like it, the negative difficulty curve, for sure, but also, uh, you didn't... This was the first end boss I felt like we weren't actually progressing it. Like, usually when you progress any fight, hard or not, you get better at it, and then you continue, and then you get more consistent, and then you're working on the next part of the fight, all the while getting more consistent by having constant repetition of the early parts. And that never happened 
on this fight. Like you did P1 and P1 was actually really well tuned and really difficult. Um, and then you got to the P1 intermission and it was literally twice as hard as it should have been. We sent 20 people, 19 people to one platform and spec full AOE builds and could not kill the mobs in time. Like that's, they were literally had twice as much health as they were supposed to have. So we just couldn't progress there at all. We had to wait for it to be nerfed. Okay. They nerfed it. We progressed through it. We get to the force, the first storm surge. It's like twice as big as it should be. Can't learn anything. They nerf it. We get through it. We go through the rest of the fight. The second intermission had no reason to exist. Just made the fight longer for no reason. And then the last phase was actually really good. Like it was difficult. It was short. Uh, and you had to like kill the boss as fast as possible. And we were like getting ready to wake up and like, okay, we think we can optimize our damage over the weekend. We can figure out how to kill this. And then like, obviously the boss was nerfed and killed while we were sleeping. So I don't know if you knew that, but that's the main reason why Always I fucking... Fun. Yeah, yeah, not not great when that happens. Second, it turned a phase we were looking forward to optimizing into the easiest part of the fight. And now it's a long phase, which made it less fun. And there was less going on, and it just seemed like a target dummy that you had to do, like, one or two mechanics right, where the phase previously was, like, pretty intense. So they made the boss worse. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It just was bad for that. But then, like, Dranos and other people progressed it without having to deal with any of that. They started the boss with it in its killable form, and I think still, even in those cases, it's pretty lower reviewed. But I mean, I can't, I, I've never had much of a worse time on any boss than we did on Razageth. One thing I think about uh, and bosses that's tough to sort of talk about is you, everyone has like a very, very different experience, right? I think the end bosses are the most different in terms of like how Max experiences it, Dratnos, me, and Teapot. Like, I'm pretty sure all three, or all four of us literally have very, very different experiences with that boss just because like the amount of time, depending on when you kill it. The fact that it always like the end bosses very frequently get nerfed or tuned and stuff i feel like it's very hard to have a shared experience on an end boss like that unless you're in the same guild yeah that's why it's important that like we're doing our lists for us right this is yep. we're not trying to do like a a general list what's the best for the community type thing what should blizzard do yeah. type thing and not only how your guild experienced it but even as a different role a fight could be yeah. awesome versus a fight yep. that uh isn't uh isn't great so uh razageth growl what is your seven my number seven is actually another end boss, and I will continue to terrorize the list with Sarkarath. I have it higher. I have yeah. it higher as well. Oh, okay. Um, All right, maybe... I have Sarkarath opinion, higher. Yeah. Opinion... All right, maybe my opinion is right here. Well, yeah, you're terrorizing the list by having it too low, is what you meant. <laughs> okay, course. there you go. All right. Yeah. Okay, we have uh, my six, I guess. Uh, my six is Taros. Does anyone have Taros higher? I, I had Taros higher. Uh, Dratnos, what is your six? Smolderon. I have Smolderon I have higher. Sm higher. Uh, Teapot, what is your six? Uh, my six is Nimue. Oh, interesting. This almost made I my also list. Have, I also have this boss at six. Oh, cool. All right. Either one of you, take it away. I like it. I like the fight. Uh, it is good. Uh, I think the... It's really fun, and I, again, I think this is definitely a bit of a melee or kind of tank perspective. I think optimizing your uptime while also successfully doing the mythic mechanic and also handling um, the the regular blooms as well is really fun. Uh, I like the fact that you have to rotate players uh, between the mythic ad and, of course, the uh, regular ads across the board there. I think it's very, very solid. Um, I would rate it higher if it did a little bit more. I would say that a weakness it has is that it doesn't... I kind of wish it had an extra mechanic. I think it did have one on PTR or something, but it was uh, it was kind of scuffed and weird. Uh, and so it it, uh, it kind of was disposed of at some point. Uh, but yeah, I like it. Is it that, is good. Is that true, Dranos? I don't know. I, that doesn't sound right to me. I, I, I think the boss oh. uh, went live. Uh, all it, oh, wait, no. It, it, it was like weird on PTR for something. Let me no, go fact find check him on PTR, on. Max. Come on. Oh, oh, the knives. It had, well, and he was yeah, right, yeah. and he was right. It, and oh, he was right. It yeah, is. it was the fall. It, 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 it had fallen avatar yeah. knives. I totally forgot. Dude, you need to like bring them through lines to. Reduce okay, their that damage was as well. that was okay. You said yeah. that like you wish it had a little more. That specific mechanic you would not wish was there because like it, it required so much more movement. The dagger would go to you, and you had to make sure that it crossed a line on the floor, which meant you had to cross a line on the floor. And if you didn't, it would one shot you. It was. It was not good. It's the good that it was gone. But that's the good shout. I actually forgot that existed. So I, I also rated this boss high. I thought the, again, sort of like forgotten experiments, I thought the pacing of this fight was cool in the sense that you start the phase, you get the like, you know, the, the everyone takes damage, but it's like pretty easy. And then it starts off easy. And then as more and more flowers or whatever spawn, it gets harder and harder. The group damage gets like really high. And then eventually you sort of have to split up. Uh, I sort of like the split up, especially towards the end where again, it was, if it was a little bit hectic and there were people dead, um, you know, you can sort of be like, oh, the left ad needs help. Like send some people over here. 
One thing I didn't like was the fact that the Mythic ad, like, you, I, I didn't quite understand why you could only go to the Mythic ad once. I felt like just having three ads and just like, I don't know, I guess they wanted you to rotate and not go to yep. the same one every time. But I, it was a little bit frustrating when, like, you know, the two people that happened to die were the people that needed to go to the Mythic ad last. And it felt like you couldn't really compensate for things like that happening. And I would have liked, you know, like, for instance, if the, if the left ad needed help, you can, like, you know, communicate and figure it out and then solve it but if it's the mythic ad where people are dead it's a little frustrating now it maybe says something for my guild that you know a lot of my thoughts on bosses are what it's like when a few people are dead but i think that's you know a lot of other people that play this game as well you know everyone's got those couple people in their guild but overall i think it was like a pretty fun fight i also kind of like fights where you know like on prog it's like okay you're trying to soak the flowers and not take so much group damage and then on farm it's like well okay now there's a bunch of flowers up because my dps don't want to move but like that's kind of okay because it gives me something to heal and it's like obviously that's like not a super big factor but there's just a lot of like little cool things about the fight that i think are interesting i also think the lines are kind of a, a funny sort of like nerve check that i mentioned like the previous boss where they're like very very easy if you're ready for them but when there's a lot of other hectic stuff going on and you're trying to figure things out like you just get hit by the line and you get stunned and you feel really stupid i maybe wish the visibility would have been a little bit higher but overall i think a lot of the mechanics in that fight were like very very fair and just you know you could you felt like you were improving at the boss it felt like it had a good duration where you know you learn it over the course of a couple hours and then you beat it yeah i i i thought this boss was great I, it almost made my list it certainly could have over any of the bosses near the near the bottom here it was also, I want to shout out one thing that you guys, you guys already said about Naimu. This is a boss that, like, we killed in two pulls. So, like, I don't think about this boss a lot because it just instantly died. Um, but Sorry. I, but I do, <laughs> I do like the, uh, the design of it. And it also made me realize in the WoW community that, like, people, a lot of the times they're complaining about shit, they have no idea what they're talking about. So, one common complaint this patch was, like, everything is too hard to see. I hate when bosses like make everything the same color and like Naimu was just like a very green fight so people immediately were like ah I can't see anything but like I feel like this boss while most everything was green uh was very visual and not hard really to see anything and in fact I think the thing that was the hardest to see on this fight was actually the only ability that was red like that was the one that was frequently missed the most and I just I think usually when people make that argument they have no idea what they're talking about this boss I, I will say if you're on a spec you're like unfamiliar with or if you're kind of bad at the game that causes the stun lines to go invisible on your monitor I've found That's, uh, <laughs> and then you get sunny on what but yeah I agree with you uh, if, if you kind of know what's going on everything is actually very easy to see except for the sometimes the red flower yeah big fan of naimu though yeah also another like opposite of laridar in the same raid but a, a very unique boss and I'll, always a fan of them when these boss designers especially sometimes it's like one of their first bosses they make they you know coming at it with a different perspective and trying something that isn't super close to other bosses that have existed anytime those end up okay or good i'm just a huge fan of that because i think the more variety in raids the better um let's do uh, i guess we're on my five uh this will definitely be the highest this boss is here so i have scarn at number five no one else, I believe. We had one person with Scarn on their list, and I'm interested to hear Teapot's take, especially as Aberus being your first Mythic raid, and you, I believe, having gotten to that boss after the whole fiasco happened. But I just want to say before I start talking about this boss, I fully understand why everyone hates this. Like, the, the way it was nerfed, where they made the boss less fun than how it was originally, like before you cheese stratted it, uh, the timing of the nerf, uh, making a, and, like, the result of that, like, the actionable thing being that guilds just extended for the rest of the tier and the guilds who didn't extend were just weeks behind like truly terrible situation uh but this is my list and none of that applied to me in fact uh i think very similar to lihivum which is a sepulcher boss uh that i think a lot of you guys probably have never thought about since i just uh since you killed it maybe since i said it right now was actually another boss that i would have ranked extremely highly in a sepulcher or in a shadowlands list because killing that boss for us was insane like you had to figure out what boss to go to and where which ads to kill in the intermission we constantly were changing what ads we were going to and why and that whole problem pro solving process as a guild was fascinating but everyone else when they killed the boss was just did the thing we did and it was just a boss you killed real fast and didn't really think about a lot again scarn is very similar 
problem solving Skarn was super hard. Um, like figuring out exactly how many people and how many range you need to kill the things while also optimizing boss damage, the exact positioning of where the bombs are, exactly what the logic should be for clearing the bombs, how you spawn them, where, what sides of the room you want to leave open. When we killed this boss, the famous wall strat, we YOLO'd that at 5%. We never spoke about it before we did it. And with that kill felt epic. We felt like we had to play extremely well on the pull we killed it. There were so many good improvisational plays by a few of our raiders, especially the bomb clears that made that happen. And I thought it was a good time to showcase that. And uh, we just in general had a good time doing Skarn. But I fully understand that everyone else that did it after, it was deeply problematic and you won't agree with this at all, but it is my list and I really enjoyed this. I think, it, I think the boss design at a base level, what we did was brilliant. Literally no one else did it. Even the very next kill of this boss was on the wall for a fifth of the fight, right? Uh, the version you guys did after they nerfed the cheese strat was, was a worse version of what we did. They changed things to the fight that I still don't know exactly why uh, that made the fight less fun to do. So I'm a huge, huge fan of Skarn. I'll always shout this out. I think the developer did an awesome job here, and I hope that uh, he gets another boss in some of the upcoming raids to do because I thought it was really good. Any thoughts? Yeah. I mean, I would actually echo uh, a lot of those thoughts. Obviously, without the problem solving, because, you know, we, we just copy what the people who know what they're doing do. Uh, but yeah, I think that it's just a really fun fight from a movement perspective, right? I like fights that have a lot of movement. Um, using stuff like the boss's knockback to escape from the tactical devastation, I think it's really fun. I think the lines mechanic is very, very solid, actually, uh, overall, in, in that regard. Uh, yeah, it's just, I like it. It's the kind of fight that I enjoy. It's actually reminiscent to one of the favorite bosses in Guild Wars 2, actually, funny enough. It had some similarities, so um, yeah, it's good. I like it. I am a Skarn enjoyer, okay? I feel like the people who don't like it are the people who just move at the last second and die to lines. Skill issue. <laughs> that is good. Says the tank. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah. And sometimes, you know, if someone's annoying me, I move the boss, and then they die to lines. It's, you that know, was it, actually it a lot of freedom, though. the most dangerous thing. Like, that caused more yeah. deaths on Skarn than anything else was actually <laughs> tanks <laughs> moving the boss with less than two seconds on volatile ejection going out. That absolutely murdered people. It was probably the biggest, the biggest wipe causer. Yeah. I don't want to go through the whole list of, like, the, you know, the, the saga of the nerfs and stuff and why that was a huge problem. I think that's been talked about a lot. But I, I will say that there were also some strange decisions about how the mechanics worked that it was, like, 90% of the way to being a really well-thought-out boss. And then I think a lot of it as well was over the weeks where they were nerfing it. They didn't have that much time to think about how it should work because stuff with, like, tactical being baited on the largest clump of players being ra rather than awful. being on the boss. It creates like a really strange play pattern on that fight that um, I think I think it could have been nerfed into a pretty good version of a boss and it ended up being like, okay. But obviously, yeah, like this is one of those cases where it's kind of like Private Aura's, the thing where it's like, Blizzard would really like us to do the fights a certain way and you guys did that and it was fun and it was sweet, right? And then like, but as soon as Pandora's box is opened and like we figure out how to do it the the best way it's like oh this is actually really bad and then there's kind of not you can't put the genie back in the bottle right like there's not turns out there's no way to actually make that fight so that everybody has to do it the way you did without you know a lot of fundamental reworking to how the the mechanics are envisioned yeah i think that's a risk of making bosses uh, relatively interactive where you have some yeah. control on how the mechanics play out um and you know, uh, personally i do really like it when developers attempt to do that and, and i definitely hear from from what you're describing and, and certainly the what i know of the original uh, version of the encounter definitely some issues there right especially when people figure out some crazy <laughs> crazy cheese strat that kind of <laughs> just breaks the encounter in, in some sense that's obviously going to be a really sour taste uh in in, in any one's mouth any raider's mouth that's for sure um but yeah i mean look you know just just don't be worlds first then it's not a big deal just you know be late cutting edge and it's not a problem easy mm. i i actually i <laughs> i i think your take is always pretty refreshing <laughs> and interesting because i remember when you first started playing this game it was in season two of this expansion correct about uh, halfway through season two ish so I had a conversation with him on stream, not for any particular reason. I don't remember why. We just, like, were talking. And it was during God Comp of Season 2, which most people will hear that and know exactly what that's talking about. They're like, oh, and Mythic Plus is the worst meta ever. And I didn't even really bring that up. I just asked him how he was enjoying the game at the moment. And he just talked for, like, 30 minutes about uh, 
about how much he was enjoying Mythic Plus and loved it. He didn't mention God Comp one time. That didn't matter to him. He was just like someone new to WoW, enjoying it and doing a lot of high Mythic Plus, like upper 20s. And he was just like, yeah, I don't know. This is really sick. So I think it's interesting hearing someone's perspective that knows how to play MMOs at a high level that is playing WoW for a pretty first time and hearing a take of someone that doesn't have years and years of like pent up aggression towards the game kind of mm. give a fresh take on it, which is also, I think, interesting for this conversation too. I will definitely say that I probably do have some slightly psychopath takes because stuff stuff like God Comp doesn't really bother me that much, uh, to be honest. Part of it is actually because of Guild Wars 2, by the way. In Guild Wars 2, imagine God Comp, but for five plus years, maybe arguably more <laughs> than that. Um, like, it, it, yeah, you know, it, it, you know there's some pretty good builds out there um, that uh, stick around for, for a long time. So I'm kind of used to it a little bit. Um, but yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, you know, I, I am a... I'm a video game enjoyer, World of Warcraft enjoyer for sure. Uh, it's uh, it is what it is. Augmentation of vocal was a mistake, by the way. Uh, that was uh, not a good idea. Uh, tr yeah, trust me. Uh, that's another Guild Wars 2 take. Not a good call, uh, but it is what it is. <laughs> oh yeah, that's the high approval rating take around these parts. <laughs> All right, Dratos, what's your number five? Amalgamation Chamber. Way higher than me. Okay, I, I like it. Cook. Yeah, it's a cool fight. It's a, I mean, again, I would say my top five favorite boss of this expansion is not that is still not going to land on very high in a top five overall list or anything like that. But I think as far as second bosses go, like this one was sweet. You kind of had this decision about you can play the start of the fight like three different ways. You can even cleave. You can focus one down. You can be psychotic and stack the two bosses, and that does work if you have enough gear. We 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 do that sometimes uh that's uh people die but you still can kill the boss it's fun uh, there's also like a phase two that has ramping damage and there's a mechanic in it that's not particularly well i feel like nobody understood on first pulling the boss in my guild of, of like the mythic mechanic in p2 where you get assigned one and you need to clear on somebody else but not all be stacked because it does like an aoe explosion around you that mechanic's actually kind of a fun little thing to yolo in p2 the p1 decision making about clearing with people of the opposite color as you or standing in the middle and getting both stacks and then being in extreme danger is also actually a mechanic that offers like quite a bit of gameplay too yeah. right you can you can swap the positions of the two bosses you can swap the positions of certain players that was what my guild did we had we had like eight world markers in the middle and uh you would be you had a partner that you would meet at a certain marker at a certain point in p1 um of course you didn't need to do this but this was us on week one you know cooking how to do the fight and it worked and it was fun and it you know it was kind of a fun little little mechanic to do and there were a bunch of different you could just leave the bosses in place once you had enough gear very easily as well so it scaled really well into being a a boss that just got you know easier without losing its core identity as you got more gear which is always a good thing especially for an early boss um so i don't know i mean i'm rating it against other second bosses but it it's hard to imagine a second boss doing much better than this it seems like it did everything that it should do i i agree with everything you said i want to just add very quickly that the aesthetic of shadow and oh, yeah. fire in this game it's what is it shadow flame is that the name of it i mean That's that right. just looks unbelievably fucking cool and i think that adds a lot of value to this fight on top of that any other amalgam yeah, takes pretty basic yeah I, I would i would say that um i'm not sure how common the strategy was i guess i don't have the the absolute refined take on this i suppose but what kind of downgraded this fight for me is that a strategy that i saw come up a lot and, and definitely in pugs when i was, was doing uh, mythic pugs is that you would just kind of ignore the fight and just not do it right if that makes any sense you just basically have a tank solo one of them and just nuke the other one and that kind of just deletes oh, yeah. a lot of the mechanics mm -hmm. it doesn't really exist so to me it's like oh man i i really love you know i, I remember watching the uh the the liquid guide it's like oh you've got to swap the bosses over this is cool i like this uh but then i was like oh well you actually don't do that you just kind of uh you ignore the fight and just don't do well, it well i want to push oh, back okay. on that well, a little no bit mind, because i think that that's kind of cool so we knew you could do that in progression but we couldn't do it because of our gear and the mm. damage we had at the time that the boss would have too much health in p2 to deal with so we were forced to do the first phase right but i think it's almost a positive for the boss that down the road with more gear you can actually cook even more and you can actually do something like hey let's we can just skip all of, we're gonna make p2 harder but we can skip p1 if we want to i think that choice is cool mm. i mean yeah I, I know where you're coming from i, I see that yeah, I actually have a similar experience. I couldn't even tell you what that boss does. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's the thing with second bosses, right? Is uh, they, if a second boss requires you to know the mechanics to do it at full eye level, it's way too hard, right? Like, that's uh, kind of unavoidable. 
Bro, this guy in chat lied. I had to pull it up. <laughs> he said, what do you mean? You you all did do that Exposed. in week one. Those things are both at 50%. Yeah, week one, we uh, you had we to do that. Had to, yeah, because otherwise P2 goes on. For, I mean, you could yeah, do it, but it's a question of if you want to kill it in you know one or two pulls versus six or seven or whatever. One right. guy in the chat wins again. Yep. All right, here we go. Mighty Teapot, what is your five? Smolderon. I have Smolderon higher. Same. Uh, Growl, five. All right, my number five is Kurog. Anyone else? I'm going to scream. Sorry, go ahead. Well, does anyone else have Kurog? Do you have Kurog, Teapot? I do not. All right. But uh, I do actually respect this. This is a Giga Chad take, actually. Ma uh, make your honest. make your take, Grout. All right. I can't really explain why, but for me, this is my favorite implementation of sort of like a... I don't, don't want to call it like a dance boss, but like a scripted sort of fight where it's like, there's just a bunch of different parts. Like, okay, go here. Okay, go here. Okay, go here. Okay, this mechanic. And it just feels very like fair and naturally sequenced. It's also just in general, a pretty fun fight to heal. There's a lot of damage. It's very, very long. You have to manage your mana. Um, I like the aesthetics of how there's like all the different elements. I get that they're supposed to be like, oh, you choose, you know, stuff, but that's not how raids work. Everyone just copies Echo and Liquid. And so I just generally like how there's different colors of effects. I feel like all of the things that were going on were like different and cool and you could see what was happening. You didn't really feel like there was any sort of like really nasty overlaps or just, I don't know. It was just overall just a fun fight to heal for me at least. I'm not surprised to hear the healer rank Karag. Uh, I think very similar to Magmarax, actually. If you guys have ever noticed this, or if you heal on an alt, or if you're a healer main, you'll identify with this immediately, that those Kurog and Magmarax are incredibly fun fights to heal. Like, it is it is their fights built to, to make you feel the feeling of, like, what it actually means to heal in a raid, and having to, like, move around your each of your cooldowns, and you work as a group to make sure you can live through the amount of ramping damage that's happening, and I think they both accomplish that really, really well, even though they're considered generally not great fights um i hate karag i think karag is one of the biggest failures of boss design they've ever done in this game uh they took a fight that is supposed to you know take uh you know however long you're in the fire phase you know the last phase of the fight <laughs> like a version of this fight is the last phase is a mechanic a phase where you do he does every mechanic that he can do in every phase but he's just no longer tethered to a phase and you uh based on how much time you spent in each phase up to that point, you can choose which mechanics will hit the hardest or happen the most frequently. Uh, very similar to like a Lei Shen style build a boss. That was how this boss was originally like made on uh, PTR. You could see, or I guess beta, you could see that that was there. There was like a phase very specifically coded to like have all these things cast. And then like they just kind of gave up halfway through and just made it like an instant enrage and you just automatically died. And that was bad enough. But then on top of that, there's no actual choice of where you're supposed to go. Even up until the point we killed this, they intended on us to go into more phases. And they asked us, like, we were wiping early to, like, trying to live through the end of healing these phases. And they're like, well, you're, sub like, literally a Blizzard dev was like, well, you know, like, what you could do is leave the phase and go to another phase and, like, get less. You're supposed to spread it out more. You don't have to do an entire phase in one spot. And it's like, well, you absolutely do because you gave us ads with, like, 70 million health and... You can't do that with that many ads. Like, if they just made the ads have, like, half or a quarter of the health and you swapped more often at, like, different times and moved around different mechanics while still having that element of choice, it would have been really cool. But it just ended up being a super one-dimensional fight where you just do three phases. You completely ignore the fourth, by the way. You literally never see a lightning mechanic on this fight, which is embarrassing. And then the proper thing to do, even to this day, to do this fight on Mythic because of the ad health, is you are... You are supposed to pull the boss out of the fire phase into the lightning phase at an exact timing. Like, it's a very tight timing to get him to not spawn the ad, but gain enough energy to consistently get the same first intermission ads is insane. It's one person having the reliability of just wiping you instantly due to a weird gimmick that makes the fight possible in the first place. And how that was never fixed, um, I just think it's just a complete failure, whoever made this boss. That being said, if you're just a player who doesn't care about any of that shit, and all you do is just pull the boss and do it. It doesn't have bad gameplay. Uh, so I could see it being ranked here. And especially on a healer's PV, I'm not surprised to see it. But I, I despise this fight. Yeah, couldn't have said it. I, won't, yeah. I don't have anything different to add about it. I, I think that it is just... It's such a shame that you have a fight that offers you these three different zones with different abilities. And there's like... On Heroic, even, you can do it where it's like, okay, we'll get the ult in fire and we'll use that to walk over into the ice or whatever as we're dodging the, the fire ult. And, like, that's really satisfying and fun. And it offers you a lot of... You can play it reactively. You can plan it out. 
obviously on mythic you would plan it out if you could but yeah you just can't deal with extra ads like are you kidding me it's it doesn't make any sense uh so it's one of those fights where like the way they want you to do the fight just doesn't work and we can see the way they want to see the fight right it's not one of these fights where it's like huh i wonder what they wanted us to do here it's like no it's obvious there's a <laughs> there's a totem there it's crackling with lightning the boss has dungeon journal the boss has a 10 page dungeon journal that explains what happens if you move it over there like you're supposed to that's supposed to matter it just doesn't because i don't know the, yeah i mean i'll decision. say in the boss's defense that i feel like literally nobody like tries to problem solve a boss maybe like five guilds or whatever so i think that yeah to me that, to me i understand like i completely think it's fair and i understand why you guys might care but i just think for, for my rating and for most people's rating it probably doesn't with regards to the tank moving the boss i think that's weird personally and it was frustrating to have wipes to that but personally i don't really just silly as it sounds literally it seems like every single boss has some weird timing where you have to push to miss some mechanic and some mm -hmm. weird thing where you're gonna Good milk point. or just some random wipe that you have because of one person and i feel like it's pretty deep into the raid and i think it's pretty fair to like i, don't know, I just I, I, not that it's a good mechanic but i just think it's not really that much different for me than like almost anything in any other fight if that makes sense also Kurog in heroic because there's no ads that spawn when you phase you do move around a lot more because things yeah, start hitting a lot. so like like yeah like this boss on heroic is significantly better and it's purely because they actually allowed you to do the fight it's, it's one of those uh unforced errors very similar to inerva like the the castle nathria boss where like it seems like you have all this choice like you do on heroic of like which uh which i guess whatever they're called canister you want to fill up which empowers her abilities but in mythic they made them all feed into each other when you drain them so it turns out you don't have any choice at all you just do the fight and it just happens right kind of an unforced error of design this fight just had that in mythic unfortunately um teapot what was your experience with this i know you've only done it on awakened a couple of times but after seeing this boss a couple of times oh uh, yeah i think i'd actually very much agree with uh with with your take max in terms of the design actually definitely some missed potential here uh my experience is really weird because um none of us in my guild had really done the fight before um and you know, obviously we, we looked at the strategy and we kind of had gear by the time we were properly ready to do it and it just kind of fell over on, on mythic that is uh, i didn't actually hate the tank thing that much like moving over at 97 i will definitely grant you that it's weird um for sure because you're essentially kind of you're, you're pushing the fight in a way that it's not not supposed to happen which is a little bit unusual so I'd, I'd agree with the design complaints there as well but i i would also completely wholeheartedly agree that there is there is a universe where this fight is absolutely insane uh to be honest and incredibly cool to play through because the actual concept of it uh, i think is really really good uh it's it's one of those bosses that should be good but um yeah, I don't know. I, I don't really have a super strong take on it because, again, I didn't play it on progression and the only version of it I've played just kind of died. Yeah. All right. Good old Kurog. I'm, surpri I, I'm, I'm surprised and not surprised it made the list. I, I think I think from all perspectives, it, it made sense. All right. I think the healer take is definitely good. Like, it's just, it's kind of like uh, the boss in Halls of Infusion, right? Like, you just have a lot of HPS to do. People's damage take intake is predictable and you have to do a lot of HPS. Like, that's going to be fun. I mean, even with, I mean, I think he defended it more than just the healer take, but I mean, the healer take is spot on. I, I just think Kurog... I'm just going to make this up, totally making this up. I think Kurog and Magmarax are both a top three fight for anyone who healed all three raids. I just think if you care about raid healing, those fights were just super bangers. They were just good. Um, okay, my four, which I think someone, I think it's Growl, might have it higher, but I, I have Smolder on it four. I do have it higher. Okay. Draddy, what's your four? Rashok. I have Rashok way higher. I also have it higher. I have it higher too. Okay. Teapot? Uh, number four, Farak. Ooh. I have it higher. Okay. Oh, wow. Super wow. All right, we have uh, Growl. What's your four? Man, I wasn't ready to do another one. Well, you hinted it last. My number four is Magmarax. All right, I fucking, I fucking knew <laughs> nice it. Nice work. I can guarantee you no one else. Wait, my Teapot, you don't have this on your list, right? No, I do not. Okay. All right, spit, Growl. Well, so I think my list will become very clear. The fights that I like, that are fun for me, the fights are ones that are relatively simple that have a lot of healing to do that require some coordination but don't instantly wipe your party and just sort of like repeat the same thing but it gets harder and harder as damage ramps and you have to worry about mana more and as people die and i think that magmarax is like a uh, pretty good example of that i think the mechanics are very very simple you know once you get the first two minutes of the fight you basically well i guess there's like you know once you start moving around or whatever but i think it's a space management fight but the the room is like very very big one of the things I don't like about um, Echo or 
for Zaskarn was the fact that they're space management fights, but they feel so claustrophobic, mm. and it makes dealing with mechanics and lines and circles just, like, very frustrating and very, like, I don't know, just not fun for me personally. And I just, I don't know, I just think it's a very fun, you know, it constantly ramps damage, it keeps going up, there's basic mechanics that you have to do that you have to progress, and you sort of, like, min-max your rotation. You know, it's, it's like, sort of like a patchwork fight in a way. I'd say it's, like, one of the, one of the simplest fights, but it's still, like, pretty solid. I completely, I, I want to say my opinion of this fight would be higher if I never saw the iterations it went through in testing. So like when Magmarex first came out and was tested, it was like this gigabrain, unbelievably complicated, convoluted mess. And then when it came out on live, it was just like they gave up completely and were just like, let's make this the most basic boss possible. And if I never went through any of that, and I just went live and just did Magmarax as it was. I probably would have just been like, okay, this was their idea of a sludge fist, but they've missed on sludge fists before. Like Guardian wasn't very good in Sanctum, right? Like, like it could, could just be a miss. I think it was just like way too basic. Um, but I do want to point out that this boss didn't really get quite enough credit. Uh, I think every time you did this on farm, it wasn't, it was like one of the harder bosses in the raid. I would say like it, people didn't like it also because they said it was just like super easy. This took like, more pulls than a lot of other fights than you would expect uh it it took us like 17 pulls and then i remember feeling really sad about that and i was like man we're gonna go to bed and echo's gonna kill this in like three pulls and then i saw echo killed in the same amount of pulls we did and they were super mad about it and then method killed in the same amount of pulls and then they were super mad about it it's like okay well maybe magmarax is like sneaky harder than you'd think and then when people were doing reclears of this raid magmarax was like the number one wiper besides the like, maybe one of the last two. But even then, for our guild, we wiped on Magmarax more than any other fight. So, like, just sneaky, difficult, but in, like, a simple way, I guess. Um, obviously, a great healer fight. Not surprised to see it on your list, as I said before. Um, but maybe for me, someone like me that cares a lot about design, I feel like it, this fight obviously could have just been done a lot better. But just seeing the absolute fiesta that was happening with the flip-flops and design on this fight and then where it ended up was just pretty disappointing to me. What about you, Dratty? Yeah, I will say that a boss as well, like that experience reached further down in the world top three. I think every guild that killed this boss that I know of thought they were stupid and bad for not having killed it in half as many pulls, which <laughs> yeah. is, uh, I'm not sure that's a good thing about a fight though, right? Like a fight that is sneakily hard and everybody feels stupid for not having killed, right? Like you're not getting the satisfaction of killing a hard boss and knowing you killed a hard boss because you don't know it was hard. You just, uh, you know that you feel bad that you didn't kill it yet. I don't know. Yeah, good uh, point. A weird one but yeah i mean definitely i imagine it's a it's a really fun healer fight i know most of the healers i know liked it which is good that gives us another reason to flame healers so love that teapot what do you think yeah i think uh very much you know it, it has the magmarax has the hidden psychological mechanic everyone disrespects magmarax and gets punished uh very hard actually it absolutely happened in my guild as well 100 percent um and i i would say that um magmarax for me is just in the wrong place in the raid swap it with rashok and i think magmarax is just way better um positioned like where it, where it should be i think and that maybe gives you some more room to juice up rashok even further even um with that like where it is in the raid right now i feel like it, it could use an extra uh, just like one more mechanic i think would would help out a lot like it's it's definitely all right i i don't i don't hate the fight or have any like really big negative uh sentiment uh towards it I suppose it's just that, you know, especially after some, you know, some pr very strong bosses, I think, in, in Abras, you can realize, you know, it's all right. It's all right. It's not bad. Um, one thing I'll say about position and raid, I know a lot of you guys factor it in a lot more, but for me, I think unless it's like a really big outlier, I don't really think it's that big of a deal. You know, if the end boss of the raid takes 10 pulls or if the first boss of the raid takes 100 pulls, that's a big deal, but... I'll actually, I, I don't know if this is a popular opinion or unpopular, but I actually think Guardians of the First One in, in Shadowlands was a really, really, really fun fight. And I think that, like, if it was literally the third boss in the raid, I think it would have banged. And the fact that, like, you know, is, is it really, like, is it fair to say a boss is a lot worse because it's later and like it does the boss didn't change <laughs> you know it's the same boss so I, while i i think it's fair to dock points off i just think people dock a little bit too many points off when you know it's like oh i just you know this boss was so fun it just wasn't hard enough it's like well okay so it was you know it was a pretty good boss then like you know just because it left a little bit to be desired like doesn't mean it wasn't a good boss that's kind of how i feel with a lot of the bosses when you say like oh it should have been like earlier in the raid or whatever well when you when, at least when I say that, when I'm saying I want a boss to be later in the raid, I'm making the case of, like, I I wish their, like, this boss really cool idea was iterated on further. Like, I wish they took this really cool boss and even added more. 
uh, I suppose. Uh, but your take regarding uh, like where things are and and uh, going through different bosses, they I, I I think it does kind of like so you you were talking about Guardian, right? Mm -hmm. So Guardian uh, here I'll t I'll give you my issue with Guardian. I think number one for the community's sake, it came right after Sludge Fist, and Sludge Fist was like the big reawakening of Patchwork fights. Like oh my god, this is what that's one of the best fights ever. This is what this is supposed to be. Guardian is the raid right after it. It was clearly the Guardian was like new Sludge Fist. And people just wanted to see it thrive, and it was just killed instantly. I think it does matter if a boss is later in the raid, and it's a boss that looks conceptually fun, and then it just kind of falls over. Like, how much fun are you having with a boss that dies instantly? Like, the whole earlier late thing, I think there's just an expectation that, with linear difficulty curve, that a later boss is going to be more challenging. Um, and I, I think that uh, they it also was like a testing thing. So Guardian... In testing, you didn't have to go to, like, one battery and then the other energy reset. You could actually dunk your battery energy to different batteries at all throughout the fight. So you could, if you wanted to, go to two straight battery phases. Or you could do a long phase without a battery and then just do, like, some later. You had, like, much more, like, uh, you could, like, m modulate the fight to be however you wanted. And they lowered the uh, the coefficient on how much the damage amp scaled when the boss did the casting AOE before you took it into the battery. So you had to make decisions based on, you know, do we bring extra healers and go to like five or six stacks? Or do we bring extra DPS, go to three stacks, but just kill it early? And it was like a really cool strategizing problem. And then what they did was they buffed it so much that doing three was easy, but four was impossible. Or it was like four was impossible, or five was impossible, one of those. So like it took all of the decision-making and creativity out of the fight and just made it a very simple patchwork type thing which again if i never experienced what the fight could have been or what they were initially going for i probably would have had a higher opinion of it but uh i just feel like seeing them take so much away from it and then it also be super easy was just a huge letdown yeah i just feel like that i don't know like i i understand your point of view but i just think it's not fair to rate something lower because of what it could have been like does that mean like some boss that's total dog shit and has no hope like oh well you know this is the best that ever could have been like or, oh they made this way better than it was on ptr like i think i just sort of rate the bosses at face value for what they are rather than worrying about what they could have been or like what they were or anything like that i mean that's just how our hmm. perspectives are going to differ right because i right, right. i'm I not spend, saying you're wrong i'm just yeah. i literally spend months thinking about the boss design and how to properly do it and then we get to actionably problem solve it and then at the end, sometimes you're like, man, that was kind of a letdown. That could have been a really, really cool thing to do, and then it wasn't, right? Which is why I think my lists are going to be pretty unique in that way. What were you saying, yeah, something I, I was going to say, something I like about um, raiding and why, uh, certainly when I'm looking at it, I do look at the boss position a bit, is that is because the raids are gated, right? You have to beat them in sequential order to, to get through them. Uh, you know, mostly anyway, right? Like you could, I guess, join someone else. You mean bosses group. are That's gated? The point. Yeah, the bosses, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, I think that the experience of the, the raid escalating is really fun. You know, you get through a really hard boss, you know, the next one's going to be a little bit harder, right? It's going to be more combat, it's going to be more going on. I think that's a, uh, for me, I really like that aspect um, of the raid. And that's why I love a big climactic epic end boss uh, in all of these raids. I guess it's some of the best, you know, some of the best things about uh, raiding in MMOs. So that's, um, you know, that would be my perspective on that. But I 100% um, know what, what Growl is saying. I think that if you are going to talk about bosses from an like objective standpoint in isolation, I think that's also a really valid uh, quality to talk about uh, as well outside of like the broader raiding experience. Um... Okay, let's uh, move on for old, from old Maggie, or Magmi. Uh, my three, uh, I have Sarkareth at three. I have it higher. I have it higher. Okay. Uh, Dratnos, what is your three? Tindril Sage Swift. I have it higher. I have it higher as well. Based. All right. Tind what, hold uh, on, what was the list again? What was the list? The, the, what do you mean? The, it's the best the, bosses. The, the, oh, best that's, bosses? that's good. That's best good. Best bosses. Oh, this is good. This will be excellent when we talk about Tindril. What was what was the boss? Uh, Tindril Sage Swift. Tindril Sage Swift again, yeah. No, no, we did, Taros was before. We're talking about boss like hard boss fights. It's like uh like Elden Ring style bosses, not like uh <laughs> Super Mario sixty four bosses. <laughs> All right, Teapot. I, I continue. Teapot, what is your uh, third? Rashok. I have it higher. I have it higher as well. Uh, Growl, what Are is you your? Are you sure? I mean, that has a couple mechanics on it. Are you sure that's uh sure that's really a fight for you? Uh, yeah, I, you know, maybe it should have been lower. It didn't have dragon riding in the middle of the raid fight. Mm, true. Okay, uh, Growl, what is your three? Uh, my number three is Taros. Uh, does anyone have Taros higher? Uh, they do not. All right. Uh, it is Taros time. Well, 
very similar to Magmarax. It's sort of a themed fight where you start off. It has a very simple handful of mechanics that you have to deal with. As the fight goes on, the, you sort of are managing your space. Although the room is very big, it gets smaller. And eventually you get to the point where the boss has like a clear enrage where you die. And the mechanics get harder and harder as your mana starts to get low, as you start to run out of space, as people start to panic, as people start to become monkeys because they're losing their parse or whatever. And overall, I just think everything is very, very very well telegraphed which is surprising because the room is like brown on brown on brown which i think is a big statement to just design of mechanics and the way things look rather than just like picking the right colors or whatever i think that the fact that they were able to like make some boss in a cave where everything is rock actually like you know you understand everything that's going on is really good i like the um the mechanic where everybody sort of like uh you know claps if you will where it does group damage i sort of like mechanics like that where you it's not really like everyone has to do the same thing, but you kind of have to like be aware of what's going on and you can like decide, okay, well, I'm not going to, I'm not going to combine here or I'm going to combine here fast because we have big cooldowns. Overall, I think it's just like a pretty fun, fair, well-designed, like not too hard, but not too easy fight. That's sort of like right about where the fights that I enjoy. Yeah. I actually think that the mythic mechanic on this fight is a really good example of a fight that allows you to plan or react to it in whatever mixture is appropriate for your guild, right? Like you can be like, okay, mm. you two warlocks are always going to clear first. And then 7.3 seconds later, you know, the mages are gonna clear or whatever. Or you can just be like, yeah, kind of everybody stack and look at the raid frames and clear when appropriate and don't blow up the raid. And both of those work like at a rate that is appropriate yeah. depending on whether your guild is good at YOLOing or planning. And I think same thing a for really clearing thing for mechanic. Same thing for clearing the like little stalagmites or yeah. whatever like the tanks clearing them all in one or splitting it in two both completely viable 100 percent. so i mean the only reason this is lower on my list is mostly because of that yearning for a fight with so much greatness going on for it to be a harder fight that i could enjoy more right like that's that is Same. the thing that i am saddest about it is you guys are hard on good bosses you just wish they could be better but then you guys put tendril as number or whatever so <laughs> i mean i i think taros is about as good as a second or third boss could possibly be in WoW. It, it could be number one on my list, but again, I just, it's hard, even though you're ranking these relative to where they are, and they, it, Taros does just as good of a job at being that fight early in the raid uh, as other bosses do being later. It's just not as technically interesting to me, so it's a little lower, but I have no negative thoughts about Taros. I think it's absolutely amazing. Uh, I think I would completely agree with that. I think Taros is the strongest um, early raid boss, 100% actually, um, out of uh, all of the raids in Dragonflight. I think my the, the reason I would uh, I have it a little bit lower, I think, and you know, I, I guess it says something that I was impressed despite not kind of playing it in its original form is that I we it's a little bit different in in Awakened. Uh, I think it's not really the same. Like we didn't really do the fight properly. I guess it just kind of like you know, it's like, oh yeah, just you know, do the do the things, do the tank mechanic. But I definitely like it from a design perspective a lot. And yeah, I, I definitely agree with Yoda for it to have something more right like to to have a bit more complexity to it but yeah when it comes to just a very solid uh well-designed fight i think it's yeah it is very good it's extremely well designed for sure so this is a scenario where i wish taros taros or maybe kurog just to like go back to growl's point earlier about things being earlier or later in the raid i would love to see what a second to last boss version of taros looks mm. like right I would love to see what uh, I mean, Sludge Fist, right? That's kind of that's kind of what it looks like. If it's yeah, like yeah, pretty much. Or 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 like Kurog as a second to last boss, where they actually design it properly. Um, and maybe also because Broodkeeper, they should just not make meme ad bosses second to last boss. I'm actually interested to see if anyone will have Broodkeeper on their list. Does not look like it will be. Um, maybe we'll do an honorable mention after because I think that boss is really polarizing uh, based on what job you had. Uh, all right, so we're off of Taros. Uh, we'll go to my number two. I have Rashok at two. Does anyone I have... also have it at number two. Okay, uh, we'll get to it when uh, it goes to Growl then. Dratnos, what's your two? Sarkarath. Uh, Sarkarath, does anyone have Sarkarath higher than two? I also have it at rank two. All right, I will, uh, I will put it at two, and Dratnos, you may start. Okay, Scale Commander Sarkarath is just a great fight. I don't know, it's got a bunch of great mechanics. It's got a very compelling phase one that is exciting for throughput, exciting mechanically. It's got a phase three that is also sweet, that has, it offers like optionality and how you deal with it that I think reaches down lower in the, if we looked at guilds down the world top 100 list, the amount of innovating that happened in phase three is probably higher than any boss 
true ever yeah because you kind of needed to like oh hey we have a rep pally therefore we have a bop oh hey we don't have one and we have you know this is our tank comp right like here's what they can do oh hey we think liquid smart we're going to copy some of their stuff oh hey we think echo's smart like we're going to copy their thing every guild did a different combination of those sorts of decisions for figuring out how you want to get through the last phase uh and it required you to do that basically because you know we we were trying to yoink strats but we were looking at echoes and we were like okay they got a rep alley we're not playing a rep alley but we we can't do the exact same thing they did we're, we're gonna have to think for ourselves which always is something you try and avoid as much as possible uh but sarkarath kind of forced you to i will say the biggest knock for me against sarkarath is that i think phase two was quite uninspired but yep. one thing about that fight that was so great as well is that that was one of those bosses that's it's like seven minutes long and at the end of it it feels like you've been fighting it for a lot like it feels like a full length full course meal of a boss and then you get to the end and it's only been seven minutes you're like oh my god this is the longest seven minutes of my life like in a good way right like you've been it's been hectic the whole time you've been you've had so much stuff going on uh and yeah just, i mean just all around really really great fight what yep. about I completely agree. Massive Sarkarath enjoy here. I love the hole in the ground mechanic. I think that is really cool. <laughs> uh, to be honest, it's so much fun. And I love the coordination checks, like uh, using the um, using gateways to skip duress, right? Like just positioning for duress. I think stuff like that is really exciting, really engaging uh, part of that. It was also, you know, first um, end boss for me as well. So I think that's going to slightly uh, bias it uh, for me because it was just, it was like a brand new experience, like having to tackle something like that and all the planning that uh, goes into it. I'm very much inclined to agree with you that phase two, maybe a little, you know, uh, not the not the best thing in the world, but yeah, for sure. Phase one and phase three, extremely strong um, in pretty much all aspects of it. I don't think there's anything about Sakura that I think is unfun or annoying to deal with. And yeah, obviously, you know, I, I'm... You know, I'm not doing any of this crazy theory crafting, uh, like at the at the absolute bleeding edge. But uh, like, yeah, for sure, the fact that it is wide open and like composition stuff is it can affect like how you might go about it. I think that's like a, a hallmark of good design for sure. And it was definitely like really a main character moment uh, when you know everyone's going down. I have to stay up. I've got a tank Sarkarth all on my own and on my Brewmaster. We're ready to go. Like that was uh, yeah, absolutely a defining moment of the expansion for me for sure, hundred percent. Like incredible fight. I, I think it's okay to have bias because like it was your first fight. Someone actually asked me before we started this when i was like making my list they're like do you think you have bias for fights that you got world first on versus world <laughs> second and i think they were right like like if you think about how you mm, know i wonder well yeah i mean like if you're trying to be objective about it but like when you're thinking about how much you liked a boss you're going to have more fun on a boss where you are winning most of the time or that you end up winning or remember it more fondly than ones where you lost in general so i think like natural bias like that is going to exist from everyone um, but yeah, I, I don't, I don't think that is bad. I also think Sarkarath is a good end boss to start with, like literally half the duration of Razageth's time, I think, like how long the fight was. Also sub 10 minute end bosses have an extremely high hit rate. I believe the, uh, total number, the total amount of bosses that have been sub 10 minutes are Denathrius, Blackhand, and Sarkarath. Is, is Firak under 10? I think so, yeah. I think yeah, it's like just nine. under 10 in Firak, which is like, you know really really fucking good right so uh sarkareth was was a banger p2 didn't really make a lot of sense i think it was one of the best p1s they've ever made of any fight uh but it pales in comparison to p3 and the ability to strategize there were people all the way through you mentioned like for people's first kills but like way down the line people stopped yeah. even going down like they were like they were like not going down you were going down and it all depended on like oh do you have a good person that you can rely on to stack no okay well there's a strat where you can just not go down ever right and then with enough gear that ended up being the case i think in some people's minds sarkareth loses some points and this is actually why it's lower on the list for me is I think it loses a little bit of points in my mind, even though we won, because you just had, it had nothing to do with the boss. It had to do with the gearing system. Like the, how powerful the gearing system was, this patch affected how much we liked Sarkrath. Sarkrath might be number one on here for me. and might be one of the best bosses ever. If my interaction with it was like, we had to have an unreal DPS check in, in the last phase as well, where you're optimizing who's going down and when. You didn't really have to do that. And it's purely because of something that didn't, exist from the raid and it's that we were six eye levels higher than we ever were in the first week of a raid before so it was just a a crest diffy uh so that that's the only reason it's a little bit lower for me uh but one of the best bosses ever uh in my opinion definitely the best end boss of this expansion uh but it looks like we'll be talking about fire act a little bit after this from one of you i forget one of you has it at uh either one or two um all right uh Actually, wait, Growl, did you give your Sarkrath take? Uh, yeah, well, I'll I'll add a little bit to that. I think, thinking about it, Sarkrath 
was pretty short like i think the length was very good i felt like all the phases were engaging it's honestly like one of one of the better like more ideal end bosses in terms of like you know things that are fair and you know ways that the fight goes down i actually like enjoy the fight and maybe even regret not rating it higher and i think what i even mentioned about guardian of the first one which is going back on what i said now like hearing everyone's ranking and seeing what bosses they rank highly i think it has to do a lot to like people want a certain level of difficulty that they feel they want for the raid like i feel like teapot almost is skewed towards higher stuff because he's like you know trying to get cutting edge getting into wow like really trying to push the limits and seeing and he's like very favored towards those sorts of bosses where i'm like you know i i, I think rating is cool and i like hanging out with the boys but ultimately like i'm not trying to be spending 12 hours and getting really frustrated on a boss so like i like the more medium rated bosses and then i feel like you and dratnos are kind of in the middle but more leaning towards his side and so i actually think that ironically maybe difficulty of the fight actually has like a very massive thing to do with the way people rank it but everyone is sort of subjective with what difficulty exactly they want which is probably why they struggle with making a raid fight that everybody's gonna like overall sarkarath good all right uh love sarky what is your two growl uh my two was rashok uh i have it higher oh that's not true i had it at two and you did as well uh tell us about rashok um well similar to taros and similar to magmarax it's a very very simple fight with a small handful of mechanics all of the mechanics are very well telegraphed the fight starts off like just sort of showing you what the mechanics are but then they get harder as you realize you have to beat a dps check and you have to manage your mana throughout the fight in general i think fights that are challenging but also just like in general really really push you to just play your character very very well like i what i find fun in wow is just like the class design and playing my character and i think fights like these sort of like push your character to its limits and it's not really about like oh let me grab this orb and take this warlock gateway and jump four times over here and then slash dance like to me those sorts of raid fights are you know i i like raid fights where it's like you playing your character really really well is going to you know pressing your defensives well you're positioning well but it's not so much like you know a massive like dance go everywhere sort of fight so yeah i don't know it feels like you know it has just enough personal responsibility so like oh you might get chosen by a thing and you need to kind of be aware of where you need to put it but at the same time like it's not like you or you know the, the idiot in your guild is like constantly wiping the raid and in general it feels like you have a linear progression as you get better and better at the fight yeah, I absolutely completely agree with that. I think that those types of fights can be some of the most fun and most satisfying. And, you know, that, it's funny that, that you say that because that's exactly the experience. This was kind of the moment where um, in the Mythic Raid when we were doing it, it was like, okay, we have to press our buttons uh, more. It was kind of like the first wall that we kind of ran into was Rashok because yep. we just did not press enough buttons, right, when we were, you know, learning the raid and so on. Uh, so, yeah, that was epic. Like, taking that down for the first time was so good. And to be honest, I just, I really struggle to say anything negative about about Rashok. I think the tank mechanic is really good. I think positioning the boss to bait where you want the orbs to go and then you have to pick which one you want to go on is incredibly good. Uh, you've got to dodge stuff. And it's a very simple thing. It's just like, you know, don't get hit, you know? How hard could it be? Just don't, don't touch them. Okay, well, you know, tell that to DPS players. It's, uh, you know, the damage taken meter had some interesting stuff, let me tell you that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's incredibly good. Rashok, extremely high tier. Very high tier boss. It is 100% worthy. Maybe I should have rated it higher. Okay, maybe it should be rank zero. It's possible. I mean, I, I think Rashok could be... If you were to say no last bosses and no second to last bosses, Rashok, you could make a strong argument that it's the best boss they've ever made. It is, in its simplicity, it's really cool, but it also has so yeah. much hidden intricacy. Like, something we learned Absolutely. in... Or something we learned in progression was, like, we were just putting the things, the, like, where the fire was coming out of, the searing slams or whatever on the outside of the room and then we're like wait what if we put them all together and then at the last part of the fight we go to the other side of the room so we can turn around and look at them all and like just small things like that small things like okay you need to get rid of your debuff by going into the middle the battery in the middle do we want to send full groups in at a time do you want to do melee range do we want to have am i going to call single people to go in when they're high enough and like like i don't know just every bit of coordination on that fight seemed so simple but everything seemed to matter you killed that boss not in a long not in a lot of pulls when the raid first came out pulls would genuinely would generally increase it's one of the few bosses that held its difficulty or increased its difficulty all throughout farm because no matter how geared you were if you're, you know, least consistent couple of players were getting hit by fire, you just weren't going to kill this. So you always felt a realistic level of progression regardless of how much you blasted. The damage check seemed to always 
somehow perfectly scale with those guild skill level as well to where like even though you got so much more gear throughout farm the time you killed this was almost never on a scuffed pull you had to like have a really good pull to kill it that's so hard to pull off uh denathrius is like one of the only end bosses actually to do exactly that as well uh the visuals we talked earlier about the visuals right like uh amalgamation chamber got huge points for like the shadow flame vibe i mean this rashok is the best implementation of that just looks incredibly good this could have been the second to last boss uh it could have been later in the raid you mentioned earlier how you thought magmarax and rashok just swapped fun little uh fun fact i guess um in an interview a blizzard developer Actually, actually, the associate game director, Morgan Day, suggested if they could have done anything better in this raid, it would have actually been swapping the position of Magmarax and Rashok. And I've never heard them ever say something like that. Like, that's acknowledging a boss so good that they're willing to basically say, yeah, you know, usually they don't, like, throw their own employees under the bus. But he was basically saying, like, yeah, Magmarax shouldn't have been at that point in the raid, is what he was saying. Or, or obviously, that Rashok was so good that it should have been later. They don't say stuff like that. Rashok's very special. Um... Could have been number one on anyone's list, and it would have made sense. The only reason it wasn't for me is it's just a earlier boss in the raid that died pretty fast, and it can't compete with my number one because of that. But uh, they're in much different parts of the raid, so Rashok's a huge banger. What about you, Draddy? Yeah, I mean, I got to echo all these points, and I, I think also, like, it is a boss that has... You compare the rest of our top four, and there's something in everybody's top four that everybody else is like, you idiot, this fight sucks. Why is this so high, right? And Rashok is not that, right? Rashok, all four of us like. Um, if you like, I, I, so I know of some people who dislike Rashok. They tended to be people in those guilds that like, they would reach Rashok after wiping 75 times on Forgotten Experiments. And then they would get to Rashok and they would wipe 360 times or something. And like, it was just, if you were a guild that was doing mythic progression and you could cut through Kazara Assault and, uh, and Amalgamation Chamber somewhat quickly, Rashok would end up being, could still end up being like a massive, massive wall for you. Um, but I don't, I think aside from guilds that had that experience, almost everybody else I know that pulled that boss on Mythic loved it. So yeah, I mean, all around phenomenal fight. You know, it, the question for everybody is whether it's your, whether it's your fourth favorite, third favorite, second favorite, or first favorite, right? It's not like whether it's in this list at all. Yeah. I think that says a lot. I think it's a universally, uh, well-liked boss. And I think the, the simplicity that it has is fantastic uh, as well, because, you know, I, I think what, um, uh, Growl was talking about on how it's kind of a bit of individual mechanical skill rather than having this kind of like big crazy plan that you've got to do i think is a really big strength uh, to have actually in a raid boss right like um you know i was uh, able to uh reliably try to uh, uh pug rashok every single week i wanted my i wanted the rashok weapon of my druid so i just wouldn't invite anyone else who could roll on it it was really good times yep. um all that <laughs> all that kind of stuff and yeah i think that is really cool uh, and also another reason why the uh, mythic lockout system isn't good Good. Uh, pugging mythic raids is actually fun um and it kind of sucks that it's annoying to do that there you go we're coming full circle okay all right uh we can go to my number one uh my number one is tendril and it's not particularly close uh i know growl will have a big issue with that does you do you also have tendril at one teapot i absolutely do and i would also say that it is similarly in the current state of the raid that i played it also not that close uh i think that fight is insane uh we will get to that when we get to you. Dratnos, what is your number one? Firak the Blazing. All right. Uh, Growl is your... Well, wait. Is your number one not Firak? Stenarth. <laughs> no. Well, My uh... number one is Smolderon. Nice. Okay. So we'll just go ahead and just fill these in real quick. But we are going to talk about them in uh, any order, I guess. I'm kind of interested in all of them. Uh, we'll start with Firak, actually. Dratnos. Hell yeah. All right. So Firak... I'm going to, I could spend about five minutes talking about how some of the most awful stuff imaginable has happened on Firak. These just horrifying parts of the encounter. The first intermission is one of the worst phases to have ever existed, uh, largely due to the private aura snafu on it. But even without that, it would have not been good. That phase is miserable. You're progressing a weak aura rather than progressing an encounter. It sucks. Um, that was not great. Phase one is actually pretty fun. It's a, a fun little phase that you do. You know, most of the mechanics are not very obtrusive. The, a lot of them are pretty reactive as well. Like you have a plan for we want these four firestorms to go to these four spots, but that plan doesn't necessarily always survive contact with the four idiots in your raid that get targeted. And then you have to react to one going to the wrong place. And even those four players, they have to pretty quickly amongst themselves decide which one they're going to. Every single time throughout the whole encounter that Blaze comes out as well, you have a pretty exciting and fun little mini game of juking and dodging around to uh, to solve that. Phase two is pretty boring. It's like one ad wave spawn too long. 
It's uh, it definitely overstays its welcome. So overall, phase one is mid to good. First intermission is just horrifyingly bad. It's a zero out of 10. It would go into the negatives. Um, phase two is maybe like a three out of 10 or something like that. And it's also not very good. How is this but, your number one boss? This is insane. Yeah, but, 75% of the boss stinks. That's right. But phase three is good enough to make all of that not matter. Phase three is so good. Now, my perspective on this may be based on the fact that I was playing the person that picks up the first Corrupted Seed. Um, so I have the most gameplay in that phase, pretty much, of, of anybody. Um, so if you're not a seed doer, maybe maybe your take here is going to be different. If you are a seed doer and you don't like it, your take maybe also here is going to be different. But the three minutes of like dodging around, you know, managing your seed, doing all the mechanics of phase three, the mechanics are so brutally hard. And also, you know, the ramp up throughout that phase is, uh, is really fun. But they're such a joy to execute. It is, like, if you asked me what is the reason to Mythic Raid, it's for experiences like fire act phase three progression like that is the reason to do this is because it's so fun uh, and all of the bad stuff of the fight does not outweigh that for me there hasn't been anything else this expansion that offered that level of like wow we're really gaming here especially for me as a tank i didn't feel that on any other fights really like me as a tank i'm kind of just i'm there being a tank so that my guild can play because i care more about my guild than i care about me at this point uh, in my WoW career, but uh, Fire Act Phase 3 recaptured some of my enjoyment of playing, like, Gul'dan as a DPS, you know, playing uh, Star Augur, playing playing these early fights where I got to play them for the first time as a DPS, and I was, you know, getting to play the game for me. That was what fi Phase 3 Fire Act was like, uh, and as, you know, a long, uh, some something that, if they can get that once per expansion, like, that's enough to keep me playing this game forever. Well, Drat knows you've been playing tank long enough to finally forget what it's like to have to do mechanics. And I know, it's one. so fun. I love now mechanics. Now that you have They're one, great. you're like, this is, a, this is a fight where I had a responsibility and then I did the responsibility in my Yeah, but have you, like, when you it. actually play the seeds, particularly, we only did this for, like, 15 seconds, but... When you're playing the seeds with eight seeds out, it's so, there's so much like going on there. You, you feel when you actually are like dialed in though, you get, you get in this, this state where you're kind of like the, like a Zen flow state, looking at the, looking at the screen, like figuring out how you're going to move so that you can find the one pixel where your blaze doesn't blow up mm. anybody's seed and your seed doesn't get blown up. Like it's so I, fun. I actually have to push back on that a little bit. So I, obviously I, I agree with your assessment of the boss thing. P2 stinks. P1 is fine. P1 intermission stinks. Uh, and P3 is awesome, but when we had eight seeds out at the end, that phase felt more RNG than skill-based because of the exponential scaling difficulty at the end. Like, it just felt like most pulls didn't feel like this because you can always outplay everything, right? That's your mentality. But, like, just blazes going on the right people and, like, literally lucky things happening at that point just caused that boss to die or live. Um, another element of RNG... Sometimes you would just have a perfect pull going and just all four healers would get Firestorm with eight corrupted dots on the entire raid. Uh, and you would just wipe, you know? And, like, stuff like that on a super hard boss like that is super frustrating. But I love the problem-solving element of it. I love the how different... Uh, us and Echo specifically focused on different uh, elements of the phase to make easy. They chose to make the phase easier for the people close to Firestorm walls. We put all of the strat emphasis on making life easy for seeds and you saw both of those things play out with we wiped more to firestorm than them they wiped to seeds more than we did uh and that i just think problem solving stuff like that is really cool it was like a little mini holandra's fight in one phase very similar kind of aspect and i just think strategy wise and execution wise that boss was really really sick i just had an issue with the like the later it went it almost just seemed like pure pure whatever the fuck happens but i'm just gonna pass it over to growl to talk about how this dispelling situation <laughs> was probably one of the worst things they've ever done yeah so phase one fire act was one of the most miserable things for a healer because you essentially had to dispel on cooldown every eight seconds for the entire phase which you know you know no one cares about healer but just imagine like you know literally as a mage every single eight seconds like dispel during your combust no matter what class you are you just have to and then uh that that was miserable i really really hated the dispels it became something that you just got used to but like you know for instance as a dis priest like well i'm i you literally had to dispel three times during your ramp it's not like oh i have to fit one goal but like it's three separate dispels on top of that it felt like there was a lot like the difficulty required 
like the, being sucked in and then having like this move and bait orbs while everyone's taking a million damage mechanic i didn't really like that and it felt like it put a lot of emphasis on uh what was the evoker spell spatial or whatever sort of like how razageth mm -hmm. required you to like grab everybody and if you didn't have about like two evokers spatial and healers during that it was just like what the heck are you supposed to do um i think it, with regards to the seeds i actually agree with you that the seeds was a really cool mechanic and it's something that once you got it down, it felt really good. However, keep in mind that there are 19 other people that while you are getting it down, I'm just, ex my character explodes in the air because, oh, uh, you know, I'm, oh, I put the seed there and I messed up and, oh, some guy baited his tornado and then I turn around. I, I felt like the tornadoes were uh, not a very fun part of fa the phase three because they were like kind of hard to see and it required everybody like placing them in perfect spots, which they never did. Yeah. Um, I think the intermission I, there's more was to add as so well. bad. The intermission was so bad that I, I just don't think that any, it, the fight could anywhere. Like, I don't know. There was just so many, like the, it was just one of those fights that just demonstrated how weak orders are just taking over the game. Cause like the way you handled the spells, right. Was there was the liquid weak or that ranked to dispels and it would assign, like you had to have a dispel assigned every eight seconds in order to keep it up. Oh, my frame's glowing. My dispel's coming soon. Then you had the intermission where you had to prog weak auras. And I understand, like, think about this. You guys are in like super high end guilds with people that are like caring about the success of the guild and like being responsible. Imagine what it's like in a rank, whatever guild where people don't care and they're just trying to parse like we literally okay first day of prog we went through the intermission the entire time and we could not get through the intermission one time we it turned out that there was someone's name who was misspelled on the note and they literally <laughs> didn't even admit the fact that they weren't getting assigned and had the wrong assignment every single time for three hours and it's like no, this is not a growl specific complaint. Yeah. Like literally every guild that had to go through the private or a macro solution to the first intermission had so many frustrating wipes where like someone didn't know they pressed it on accident when they missed the gate on time or if too many people or too too few people pressed it if they got red. And then like you had to like come up with custom debugging solutions. You're pro you, that is one of the few scenarios where you're literally progressing a weak aura instead of the actual fight, and it was awful. Yeah, uh, like I like a small example of like so something that Teapot brought up earlier is like different colors. Like how hard it would have been to like just have the game give you like a slightly darker red, a slightly lighter red, slightly darker purple or whatever, and then you can be like, all right, if you have a really dark purple, you go to the front. If you have a light purple, you go to the back, right? And then you kind of yolo it like that. Like the fact that it just it seems like they just built the fight they're like haha we're gonna make this the hardest weak or a demanding fight in every single phase and it's just i don't know it feels like it's just it's similar to sepulcher in a way where some of the mechanics and some of the bosses were like so bang on but also some of the things just felt like they were just going out of their way to make things so ridiculously hard that's like only fun for i think a very small group of people also dwarves were like super op on this fight that was really stupid yeah. also you had to you could the you didn't get enough healing to heal the tree unless you were like perfect but you could mark the wild the ads and they would heal the tree for more also mist weavers and undead were kind of in undead mist weavers oh yeah that's okay kind of... i'm all right I'm bananas for that the, the blazes okay the blade yeah people having to stop with blazes i understand again you're in a rank whatever go people do not stop with blazes they just run everywhere and the and fact you that the rescues the, as well there's the a lot of blazes would yeah. spawn on your party while the trees were spawning and you like didn't even know what angle you would get and so you had to i was like trying to like look at the middle of the room but i had to like stare at the ads that were about to spawn in case i got a blaze to see the angle that was on it and then i had to look at my party and what it, it, the mechanic eventually turned into when there was blazes i just pain up myself and then just stand there because it's like i i can't i don't even have the brain power to do this like it's just i'm just gonna defensive and just stand here every time and just go hide in a corner because this isn't even like a reasonable amount of coordination that's expected to like do this mechanic on top of that you know i may be a little bit biased here you talk about oh is your guild gonna like this boss if you did it world first our guild barely killed this boss after 400 pulls then the entire guild quit and we had to get an entire new guild worth of players and i had to progress the boss twice 
So that's my that's my world first experience with this boss. Dratnos, any rebuttal? Yeah, I mean, we basically we can all agree there were some good things and some bad things about the fight. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, Teapot, what was your? Ah, this is a really interesting one, and you know, here's here comes the the masochist take. I actually think I would have agreed with Dratnos here and rated it at rank one if I'd played a version that was more similar to the one that you guys tackle. I agree that a lot of the healer mechanics are evidence that Blizzard agrees with the community. Healers do not matter, and they hate what? them. They do not want them. They want them to suffer. <laughs> I think that is definitely true. Um, but I play tank, so who cares? Um, I think the fight is incredibly epic. I think the movement uh, and all that kind of stuff on phase one is really exciting. Uh, I think I'm actually going to buck the trend here. I kind of like phase two. I got to go full main character with my uh, Gorfin's Grasp on Blood Decay. I like that. That's very cool. It's a really, uh, or at least my experience was a really exciting coordination check. Everyone's got a fan out, push the ads, you've got to grip them together, right? All that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's kind of lame that the boss flies away. It's like, oh, we get to fight a rock elemental. Wow. Oh, yeah, it's, it's very cool. Right? All that kind of stuff. Um, that's not super exciting. And yeah, the, the, the big thing for me is that um, our progression was very heavily front loaded. Uh, we spent almost all of our wipes basically kind of nailing down um, phase one and phase two. That was where like a lot of the progression was. Once you got to phase three, consistently kind of just died because we were in that point where you just double seeded um, immediately so you just had so many less seeds to deal with and of course it was giga nerfed both in terms of the health pool and also um, the number of corrupted seeds that you have to deal with as well. I 100% agree with you on the RNG, by the way, Max. Uh, that is completely correct. And it was actually, it was kind of obvious. I, I was kind of seeing that in the Race of Worlds first watching the streams. It was like, yeah, okay, this is you know, this is a little unfair sometimes with some of these things going on there. And I, I think Growl is very correct. Memes aside, regarding the healer thing, I've actually um, had this happen a lot in, in our pools where a healer would just kind of get trolled by the mechanics while attempting to heal the adds uh, and, and just get messed up by just essentially randomness uh, with regarding to the blazes. I think that some of the randomness should be toned down and be made more deterministic. I'm not sure exactly what that would look like, um, to be honest, but uh, I think, yeah, there's definitely some very fair criticism. Uh, I, I actually, I have to give my absolute psychopath take uh, on this. Um, like the 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 macro and weak aura stuff, it is bad. And private auras are in fact a bad solution to the problem that World of Warcraft faces. In fact, it makes it worse. You go from a weak aura to having to press a macro and then looking at a list. Wow. Okay, good job. Um, but that aside, I actually didn't hate the intermission. We did play the fixed version where it wasn't a private aura, so it was, yeah, whatever. We still wiped a lot there, but in my opinion, that was a pure skill issue, um, and we deserve to wipe uh, pretty much every single time uh, that we actually died there, so that's my experience with the intermission there as well. But yeah, overall, Frack the Blazing, epic fight, would be my rank one if I played a harder version. Only criticism wasn't hard enough. Yeah. I was about to agree with you and say that your experience was better because you got to do it after all the nerfs so if you didn't know all of blizzard employees were actually just watch partying our guild kill the bosses and so after we killed tendril it got changed after we killed fire it got nerfed so i was gonna say okay you played the version that was more fair but you think you would have liked it more if all of the mechanics were harder you say um yeah i i, I okay I, if i'm being a little bit more reasonable i would say specifically phase three uh for sure uh, phase I, three I do agree was, with that, actually, yeah. It, I, 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 I would, yeah. I, 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 I mean, wouldn't say it was disappointing. I still really enjoyed it. Don't get me wrong. I, I really like phase three. It was, you know, it was just that we didn't have that progression experience so much because even when we were uh, actually killing, when we secured the kill, um, we were still basically wiping mostly in like phase one and phase yeah, two, right? Because we, yeah. we, you know what I mean? Like we, we weren't like, okay, every pull phase three, boom, let's do it, let's do it, let's grind phase three out, let's go, 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 go. Um, and yeah, that was something that uh, I think is why I haven't got it at, uh, you know, rank one. Well, you mentioned, I don't think it's a weird take that you wish P3 was harder because they changed P3 from a, a phase, regardless of how far you took it. And very few people actually saw all eight corrupted seeds, but at least the phase got harder as you went on. You went from five se four seeds initially to five to six, and usually it would die before you get seven or uh, it would always die before you got eight. And what the phase is now and what it has been for a while is the strat is you have four, you pop two, and then now you just have three only forever. So it's literally the phase is harder at the very beginning. Like, you are more likely to wipe to a seed immediately than you are throughout the rest of the phase. And that's just anticlimactic as fuck, right? 
So like, I, I don't yeah. think it's surprising that that you wish it was there. And also the dispel thing was just so bad because like yeah, there's yeah, a way I'll, where potentially I'll. dispels could be interesting. <laughs> like stone form doesn't work in P1. And instead of debuffs going out every eight seconds, it's every like four seconds or something. And you actually don't have enough dispels to go through and you have to make interesting decisions as to the classes you choose to dispel. Maybe someone without a personal, maybe a weaker class. Right, and then it's actually a interesting skill gap healer thing by acknowledging the situation and dispelling people that where it actually matters. Or you could make it spawn less often to where you're not pressing it on cooldown, which is probably the even better solution. But they went with the one in the middle where you just have to press your dispel on CD, and I cannot think of something designed to be less fun uh, than that. And then the healer, the healer frames in P2 were really bad. Um, I, I think, uh, and, and it's the fact that, like, we're randomly just fighting fire and shadow elementals now. Also, we talked about private ores, but we didn't talk about how problematic the private ore situation was on the cages. And how if that failed, you had to sit there with, like, three people suspended in the air knowing you were going to wipe. You talked about, in the last phase, seeds blowing up and you dying. Remember what everyone complained about Anduin about? The worst part about Anduin is that every time you wiped, you had no idea what happened and everyone was just dead, right? Alondris as well, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And like this last phase had something similar where a lot of people, especially later in progression, weren't one of the seed people and you were kind of just like playing the same fight that wasn't too hard and just hoping that that didn't happen, you know? Uh, so overall, pretty flawed, but I do understand Dratnos and that it was epic. It was also like kind of objectively the most insane race to world first ending of all time. And just the entire last day was just fucking nuts. I think that also matters for a lot of people as well. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I agree. I had, I had fire on the list. I just think it's too deeply flawed to have, uh, much higher than I, I would I have an eight, something like that. Yeah. I, th I think everybody's perspectives here are fair and definitely mine is the most unhinged, but I can't, I can't change how I feel. Yeah, no, this is all about how we feel. I would, I would much rather have that than everyone just try to make some super relatable, this is what the popular public opinion is on this, and let's all just have the same list. I think the fact that they're different is, is really interesting. Uh, so to go into another boss that Growl will get mad about, uh, I had <laughs> and, and Teapot had as their number one as Tindril Sage Swift. Um, I'm not actually going to start the first minute or two of this like Dratnos did with Fyrak and going to defend all of its flaws. Uh, I'm going to talk about why the fight was fucking incredible. Uh, we started this fight, and I could not believe how fast it was. In fact, I... Let me put this thing away here and open this. Uh, oh, actually, I'll screenshot this and then show you. This is what I sent to Blizzard the uh, night that we first started this, and I wasn't kidding. Like, like I, I ended up predicting that we would kill this boss pretty fast because we killed it on testing, and I literally said, Lamau, does this boss have, like, bloodlust or something? I cannot believe how many mechanics this boss casts in the first, like, 30 seconds to a minute or just all of P1, basically. It just seems... I've never seen anything like that. It just seemed like a boss casting as many mechanics for two or three bosses. Uh, problem solving that was insane. I think three-second seeds were something that initially was... Uh, seemed impossible, but ended up being something I enjoyed because it was something we, near the end of that fight, started doing at like an 80 to 90% success rate. That being said, if they had that in the last phase, we would have been pulling that boss for another week. Um, I think the dragon riding element was great. I sounded like uh, Growl is going to use that as a detractor. I think if they were ever going to do dragon riding on a raid boss, and you knew they were as soon as they made no good offensive, the it being an in-between phase thing, a little bit of a break in being able to restart, and have it not be super, like, consequential. And then on Mythic, adding the ability for people to fly up during the fight and not feel bad about it because they come down get a huge damage amp or get, do a huge burst of damage. Um, I just think the fight was incredibly well put together. Uh, the last phase was such a great incorporation of all of the total mechanics. They somehow made a boss with dragon riding that was both simultaneously a healer, a moonkin, and made you dragon ride, and the boss ended up being incredible. Uh, the only real negative I have to this fight, and the negative that I think keeps this from being, like, literally the best boss they've ever made, as far as creativity and the execution of it, is the fact that this boss didn't end how it could have ended. With the boss have it hitting 100 energy in the last phase, and what it does is it actually channels a, like, Rigalon-esque massive bang like spirit bomb thing that just comes down onto the platform and kills you and I think the only way this boss would have been better is if there wasn't like another minute or two in P3 that didn't need to exist they acknowledged how far you were actually going to get and then have it end as if you are beating that cast time I think that could have been a more epic ending uh, and made the fight make a bit more sense. Uh, but other than that, I really enjoyed this. It was super fucking hard, but was just one of the best experiences I've ever had playing games. Uh, well, 100%. Uh, 
Okay. I would say that watching Tendril progression, um, you know, in the race to Worlds first, it's definitely a huge motivator for me to get better at the game. Um, because yeah, the the only thing I'm gonna say that it was a little disappointing for me about Tendril is that it wasn't hard enough. Uh, it is incredible. It is so fast. It is so dynamic, right? Uh, incredibly exciting the entire way. The dragon riding is actually really cool. It's actually something I was terrified of. Like, no, don't do it. Don't put this in a raid. But actually, Same, it's yeah. really fun. And like the, I like the uh, piloting. It is actually relevant, you know, like for uh, both the mythic mechanic and also the intermission mechanic. You have to actually do something. Like it is failable. It's not just like a hey. Flap your wings for, for 20 seconds. Yeah, it's not the hardest thing in, in the world, and maybe they could have pushed that farther, but it's always really difficult with stuff like dragon riding. If you make a gimmick too annoying, it goes from, okay, this is kind of fun to this is the worst thing ever made, and you know, I want to uninstall now. Um, but yeah, Tindril is is incredible. I uh, absolutely insane, uh, insane fight overall. When did uh, you kill I like Tindril, by it. the way? Like what like uh, it was like a couple months ago? Yeah, we played the Giga Nerfed version, unfortunately, uh, the 12 seed version uh, of the encounter. See, that's... Um, but yeah. Well, I'm surprised yeah. to hear that because I, most people's negative opinion with Tindril almost entirely has nothing to do with boss design or anything like that. It has to do with the fact that that boss was not nerfed fast enough to be a relatively good difficult difficulty for the guild that was doing it like they just took too long to make this boss reasonable like they do this in every patch right like they make bosses that are good for people you have to nerf them or hopefully you have gear that makes you stronger over time that passively nerfs fights that feels a little bit better neither of those things happened in this raid they, we had higher eye level than we've ever had before relative to what other guilds did and mm. they just famously took too long to nerf this fight you can look at i think it's prog stats or something like that you can see the spikes of guild that kills this after nerfs which is pretty pretty big indicator that it was left too difficult for too long um but the fact that you killed it later although maybe you are like you said a masochist you were like i would have had fire number one if i could have done it when it was super fucking hard so you getting to do super fucking hard tendril is not surprising that you have it up there mm. I think this this is again a slight derail here, slight yap. You know, we've got to keep it going for the chat, haven't we? Um, but I think this is such a fascinating part of World of Warcraft, actually, because the devs have to make something that's hard enough for Echo and Liquid, right? Um, and because, and this is a Dragonflight thing, right? As my understanding of this is kind of a Dragonflight thing, um, is that because gear progression is so fast and you kind of cap out so fast, it doesn't nerf itself like after a couple of weeks, right? Like you know, you by the time you get to like most skills are gonna be basically maxed out right like you're not getting any stronger you've got to play better and a lot of the mechanics are very punishing you're not just gonna oh getting a bit more stamina is gonna save you there or oh getting a little bit more uh dps is gonna save you here if you don't do the mechanics you're dead uh there's there's no way around it pretty much and this is a really fascinating part um because of how good you guys are at the game right it's really difficult for them to find this balance without adding something like a tournament realm or something like another difficulty on top of that which would just be weird right um but yeah uh, that's that's kind of another topic i think it's an incredibly interesting part of like where the game is at right now uh, like with how powerful the professional scene is yeah that well that is something we can get into later after this but it is something that's also like a it's possible we've gotten so good that they should just not have us be the tuning goal. Let us kill things a little faster, right? And it's hard for me to say that because I love having challenging fights, but like it's becoming so much of a gap that it could potentially negatively harm everyone else. And then also, especially in a patch where you guys are not killing this with any more gear than we did, you know? If we killed Tindril at 470 eye level mm. and you killed it at 488, you would have shit on Tindril with much less nerfs, right? But we killed it at 481 yeah, of because of the ability to farm splits, so it didn't actually nerf itself. You didn't get more powerful after the first couple weeks, right? Uh, but either way, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, I think Growl's going to have a huge heater here for Tindril, so I'll let Dratnos get in his uh, get in his takes before he tears us all down. Yeah, I got I got the same uh, the same pros for Tindril. It was definitely just super fun for those of us that see the thing is we've got teapot here that's supposed to be like representing the lower end of player but i think you're in in disguise much more <laughs> obviously close to me and max in terms of like what you look for from a fight right like that's i feel like you're not very representative of of what the lower end ish players are generally looking for because like wanting super hard difficult fights and wanting to improve yourself to be able to then challenge them is is just not a very common mindset down there because if it is it you, you know you go up and you end up in the higher rank guilds because that's what you want. So I, don't know, I accuse you of being a yeah 
elitist in disguise. I am a degenerate. Oh yeah, hundred yeah. <laughs> percent. It's, it's um, bad. <laughs> I think that I'll also uh, to preempt some of Growl's. I think very fair criticism of this fight. I think that a lot of the problems with Tindril's difficulty location in the raid aren't just Tindril's fault. Like Tindril was the first really hard fight of that tier on Mythic, which made it so that if you were a guild that, you know, it's was similar to the Rashok. It's it. literally the Rashok yeah. thing, but later, yeah. You you don't have like a like if Nainu, Laridar, and Smolderon were all 10, 10, and 5% harder or whatever. Like, so Smolder Arm is 5% harder and, and Naimu and Laredar were 10% harder or something like that. Then guilds reaching Sm uh, Tindril and having their guild explode and disband over it would have been a much less common thing even with the nerf timing that it received because guilds were just reaching that boss before they were ready to because the, the rest of the tier uh, was as easy as it was. Now, could you solve that by making Tindril easier, faster? Yes, and they should have done that. But you also could solve it by making the the difficulty ramp before tindril a little bit harder uh and that i think also would have worked so I, I think that the problem is it's not just tindril's fault there but i agree that's a huge problem with it it's a good point all right growl lay it lay it lay it on us unleash i mean actually i've been listening and i like agree with you know a lot of the stuff that you said like i think the dragon riding definitely the best part about the fight second <laughs> best part about the fight what teapot said is watching other people do the fight that's <laughs> a, a really good part of tindril i mean look you you made the comment that oh it was like the first hard fight or that oh they need to make it you know for echo and liquid i mean they just really don't like they don't need to make a fight that's super hard for the world's best players to do that every other player has to do if they want to get good gear right like i get if it's like yep. some optional like thing but the fact that like you know there's a status quo in wow that a huge majority of the players are trying to get cutting edge and the fact that you put this giant mess of a wall in front of it in order to do it is just i don't know i think phase one was like a ridiculously like outrageous learning curve any guild just spends the entire first week wiping immediately in phase one over and over again it's like a very very scripted dance where every single person needs to do every single thing so specific and you have to get this feather and you have to fly here and this person has to stand here and it's like i i just feel like for a huge majority of the players it's just not something that people want to do and it felt like as an individual player you had such little impact as to the success of your raid and and then it's one of those things where like okay you pull the boss 30 times and then you mess up one of the times or two of the times it's like well everybody messes up one or two of the times and that just immediately causes a wipe and then you're just dead i also think the flying from platform to platform it just every single phase was like sort of similar but it was like sort of different and it just felt like there was so much learning and like research that had to be involved like for instance our guild had like a 14 slide powerpoint of like every single game state in each of the phases and where everyone stands in these giant lists there's these giant weak auras for okay there's this dispels and these people are prioritized to go here and then this healer is the first dispel and it's just so many layers of complicated coordination on top of each other over and over again and then on top of that you have the the like being rooted and the whole like oh you want to stand close enough to get rooted but then like your team doesn't know how to fly because they're dumb and they're like you want to be close to each other but then everyone stacks up and everyone blows up and like the whole idea between getting rooted and then having people broke it up i felt was just very oh very the, the whole feathers and, like, thing fun. sucked i forgot to i hated that. everything yeah. about the feathers i hated yeah. everything about the flying other than the fact that it wasn't there like you know you weren't doing the fight um <laughs> yeah i don't it's just it was just too hard man like i think it's just it's just too much like and it wasn't really like in my point too about like what i found fun about rashok or some of these other bosses is the difficulty is playing your class very very well but like none of this is playing your class man like flying around and picking feathers and like doing a dance and like ever okay everyone line up for the dispels and you have to be this per pixel perfect or else one of the seeds spawns in the lava and then you know no one wants to get it the seeds mechanic again i think i really really hated the seeds mechanic because everyone what did everyone want to do they wanted to grab the closest seed to the boss and then run right straight back to the boss right and it's like well okay now i'm a dis priest and i'm just running a marathon out to the edges of the world 
and then i just barely get to it and then like a mage blinks on top of it it's like okay well i just didn't understand why every person could only get one seed like i really feel like that part of mythic yeah. didn't really make it that much more fun and just added a lot of like no that was a bad, RNG that was a bad, of that was a bad thing. complication to the fight and the fact that like that was such a big part of the fight and the difficulty of the fight and there was so many wipes and if ones i i really wish it would have been either you could have been able to get multiple seeds or if one seed goes off it's like oh no now we're gonna take some raid damage we need to compensate for this hmm. not just okay your raid's dead okay go back to the start hmm. like, i don't know i think that's Overall, just a I just... philosophy you could apply to a lot of things is like most things in a fight that one shot you or kill your raid actually like diablo randomly did this in the most recent season they like they made it so things that used to one shot you on lilith if you guys have ever seen someone do that fight it gives you like a stacking thing that it exponentially increases your damage and you need to hit it by like four of them before you wipe so you could do a boss like tendril maybe fuck up a seed you'd still see 30 seconds to a minute farther and maybe wipe to some huge damage event but like you it wouldn't be instantly over and then there would still be progression you'd be progressing that later thing and know that you also need to get better at the thing you like technically in quotes wiped on earlier you know right like i think that actually could be something that uh is yeah. at least interesting to look at. I think that would be huge for a lot of fights, CBH. Like Razageth letting one of the orbs explode, uh, instantly wiping you. Smolderon failing the mythic mechanic there, instantly wiping you. Like all of these are mechanics that I don't. I think they shouldn't instantly wipe you, except maybe if you're trying to do it with Race World first levels of gear. But like otherwise, it should be it should be something where you can screw it up and you know it's punishing. And if you screw up another thing in close succession you're gonna wipe but like you can you can recover from it because something that's really fun about wow is recovering from a mistake and i think that that's something that dragonflight True. all across the expansion has been Didn't pretty bad about creating yeah. fights that let you survive a mistake and you know outplay it by everybody locking in and figuring out how to save themselves and growl you were talking about the dispels too right like the i think the dispels were a problem and i don't know if you got to the point i don't know exactly when you did the fight but they nerfed like the time. They killed it the day before they nerfed it. Well, which nerf? The the one where you had more time to dispel the four debuffs. Or... Uh, whatever the big nerf was, where they I don't, I don't remember exactly what it was, but time. Yeah, it's to funny dispel. that it's a boss. We can think we can say big nerf, and there's three. There's three. Days. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm looking yeah, at I mean, Tinder's account. It's, it's such a these two. It's uh, did you kill it in <laughs> yes, January it or February? Uh, I blocked that part of my memory out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well January fifteenth was the first major one and then looks like february 26th it was an even bigger like massive gap um I'm, I'm looking at your screen right now that's number of kills it definitely wasn't 800 it was definitely like in the 200 range. okay so it was the january because we, well, we got hall of fame just barely okay yeah that i mean that looks like it right just just after yeah. that was the okay yeah, cool yeah. um yeah, well, I was going to ask you, like, I think that's another fight that, like, kind of required you to have weak auras in a bad way. Like, if you, I don't know if it's the version of the boss you killed, but it probably was the one you progressed, where each healer kind of had to be assigned to dispel a certain person, mm. and a, and, oh. and in a certain order, or else, like, everything would be fucked. And I think yeah. that is, like, an underrated mechanic where you would just be totally fucked without something doing that for you. Yeah, ra random t tangent that I won't go into, but I feel like they should remove the cooldown on the spell for PvE, and then, like, stuff like that would just be, like, you know, maybe make it have a high mana cost or something, but have, like, one healer. Okay, now you're the person who's in charge of dispelling everyone sequentially. Okay, like, or maybe, like, each healer takes turns or they're not in cooldowns or whatever, but it does. I feel like healers having a, a dispel cooldown is sort of, like, I don't know, archaic and weird. I don't really understand why. It may, it complicates a lot of mechanics that could otherwise be good. All right. Uh, All right. What did you say? Were you going to say, t oh, yeah, I was going to say, I, I just really agree with the the fact that, you know, if you have too many things that, oh, you know, you instantly die if you mess that up. That is something that is certainly to be avoided. I think that's a, a very fair criticism of, of some of the fights in the expansion, 100%. I think that, you know, I'm actually really inclined to agree with, with Growl here that, uh, like, the perfect encounter, I feel like, will be as mechanical as possible and, and i think it can be quite difficult to make really hard fights that are pure mechanical like sometimes you are going to need to have these uh, complexities and like big coordination checks i think there's definitely a place for that um but yeah i i think that um having like really big individual mechanical skill checks is is a really big target like for making a fight um you know from a design perspective for sure having mechanics that maybe screw you over later stuff like things that maybe heal the boss or make the boss do more damage right or reduce your damage to the boss so you can still kind of push through while still improving what's come before i think is a, a really 
uh, it's a really good uh, design philosophy to have. I mean, if you look at fights that were the most problematic for people, fights that, regardless of how much some people like them, fights that a lot of people fucking hated over the last, like, three to four years, you would be almost exclusively naming bosses where someone messed up and the entire raid got one shot. Yeah. At least, at least frequently. Like, I think it's okay for some mechanics like that to exist on end bosses, but it can't be, like, Anduin is maybe the... the best example of this but the worst example of them doing this wrong is uh every single mechanic was that if you miss a kick in p2 if you didn't kill the abomination nice. in the intermission if you uh didn't stun someone's soul when they were downstairs and it went off if the people downstairs didn't kill their ads in time if you didn't send enough people downstairs literally any if, if you failed blasphemy you know what i mean like just every single mechanic the punishment was the pull was over not something has gone wrong let's fix it and as dratnos pointed out the something has gone wrong, let's fix it thing is actually fun, but you're robbed of doing that ever, right? So I think it's a good point. What a great segue into the, the next boss. Hell yeah. Yep, let's talk about Smoldy, Growls number one. Smolderon is probably one of the hardest and like most mechanically dense fights that they've ever done. That's not that. That's not, okay, one person messed up, you know. Every single person is roughly doing the same thing. If you die or make a mistake, the consequence is essentially everything is slightly harder. You know, whether it's you didn't get in the soak and everyone is taking a little bit more damage or you put True. your lines in a weird spot and everyone kind of has to dodge or they can press a defensive or maybe if everyone's top, they don't die. Maybe you didn't get your orbs in the intermission while the boss is getting a damage buff. And realistically, that's probably a wipe, but you're not going to instantly blow up the raid i think smolderon is like True. one of the greatest examples of like an actual very very difficult coordination required fight but every single one of the things that you're doing is like you have a lot of say into how it is you know you have a lot of say of oh man my i see that idiot mage running around who's not getting in the soak i'm gonna press a defensive here like because this soak is gonna hurt harder or, oh this moron rogue is like shadow stepping out with the lines like i'm gonna be ready for it and dodge or you know and it's like i feel like you have so much agency over your own life but at the same time it's still a very very difficult boss that requires a lot of skill it's a dps check in a way because there's like a pretty clear enrage it's like i don't know it's basically the exact like that's sort of the benchmark for me where that's like the ideal difficulty of like an end boss or a near end boss is like you know obviously that's not hard enough for some of the best players in the world but in terms of you know gating gear behind it and achievements and stuff i think like this is it's like almost a perfect boss for me I agree with everything you said. I have uh, almost almost nothing to add other than a uh, really annoying private or situation. Uh, yeah, and that mechanic yeah, also fails yeah, yeah. the one-shot everybody if you screw it up test. Okay, okay, I will that, actually yeah. agree that the orb thing was, like, stupid and, in my opinion, completely out of place. I think it very easily could have been fixed by just having two orbs. And then, okay, you know, here's the two people. Like, make sure you don't, you know, blow them up at the same time, you know? Like, I think it's unnecessarily complex or... Or, you know, the, the suggestion again of, okay, well, let's have four orbs, but we'll have them different colors, you know? And then, okay, now always the blue one goes first or whatever. Like, I think that could have been solved in so many ways. And that was definitely the blemish on the fight was that, like, before, like, that orb thing after each slam. Also, I will say that I played Dispriest and the tier three uh, set Dispriest. This was, like, it fit so well with that fight. And it was so fun, even though I was really bad at it. I actually, that takes me to another point about this fight. Uh, something positive was that this, it was like a weird timing fight. And that type of fight means that for a lot of specs, there's some pretty cool, like, mastery you can you yeah. can develop with it, right? Like, not all specs had this, but there were mages were doing, like, blink to the back of the room and then blink back so I can pick up my orbs, like, two seconds before they reach the boss so that I can get two sets of CDs instead of one into damage amps. And, like, the, I don't know, fights like that. This was a fight where if it was easy for you, you could you could do stuff to make it so that you were squeezing more of your throughput out of it. And it was a fight where throughput mattered. So I think that that's always really cool. Um, all righty. Uh, Teapot, did you talk about Smoldy yet? No, but I will now. Um, yeah, you know, it's it, this is the problem with with raiding bosses. You know, like I, of course, I read it down there at number five. But I, I yeah, like listening to all of this, like, you know, I, I think, man, it seems very unfair because Smoldy is a complete banger. It really is. Um, I, I think it's uh, engaging for every role uh, in the game. Like everyone's got stuff to do. There's a lot of uh, individual skill with uh, dodging the waves and like the movement with uh, dealing with the heal absorbs correctly as well. Uh, the orb mechanic, yeah, it is a little bit scuffed. Uh, you know, I, I love reading lists. You know, I, I had the wonderful job of telling people when to orb and I guess, you know, that's 
that's something, I guess. It's not something that, um, again, you know, I am a bit of a weak aura psychopath. It didn't bother me that much. Maybe in a couple of years' time, I'll learn to hate it uh, as, <laughs> as much as everyone else does uh, in that regard. But yeah, yeah, it is It is a really good fight. Certainly one of the, the highlights of a major, so 100%. Uh, and yeah, I, I do feel bad. I feel bad for Smoldron, you know, like down there at uh, rank five. I feel a little guilty now. Doesn't feel good. Well, it ended up when you uh, account all of our ranks together. So I just had him add whoever made this sheet, a very simple point metric. It's not super accurate, uh, but basically if you got voted in 10th place, it gave you one point, and if you were first, it gave you 10, and then it just simply added up all of our lists. Uh, I don't think the top five are very surprising. The top five are, regardless of order, are uh, Firak, Sarkareth, Smolderon, Tindril, and Rashok. That's just not surprising, right? Like, And then six to 10 is a little bit more polarizing, right? It's like Taros makes sense, and then Naimu is interesting. Skarn is either you love it or you hate it, mostly hate it, and two of us liked it. Uh, and then the last two just could have been anything, right? Uh, I think it's more just like, kind of shows you that there were just like six really, really good bosses, this expansion, basically. I did, I did want to talk about something, though. Interesting thing that one of you guys said earlier. You said, it's ridiculous, Tindril is, a boss like that is too hard for people doing this game that should get loot for. Something that I was thinking about more and more um, is like people always talk about like make mythic like cosmetic only or something like that. I think yep, I I'm think ready. based. I think based. based. Wait, wait, one second. Based. All right, good. Take over. <sighs> yeah. Well, okay. I'm not. I'm gonna. I'm gonna kind of disagree with that. I don't think all of mythic should be cosmetic only at all. Like, why the fuck would someone do gnarl root for cosmetics? Right. Like gnarl root is not. In fact, gnarl root's easier than the. Uh, because the... it's the first boss. It exactly, of progress. course. Sort of like, I well, think... sort of like what uh, Teapot said. It's like, why would anyone do a plus two for Keystone Hero? It's like, we need to do a plus two to get higher. Yeah, so I think the actual major difficulty jump in this game doesn't exist from Heroic to Mythic. It, it's from Smolderon to Tendril. And, yeah. I, and, I oh, yeah. and I think oh, a boss yeah. like Smolderon being required to get some of the best loot in the game is completely fair and not unreasonable at all. But I think from Tendril and Firak it is. So... And I don't know if this is just a this raid thing. I don't think it's a race world first thing either. I mean, there's there's been bosses in the past, uh, like before the race world first was ever streamed or tuned for or anything. Fallen Avatar and Kill Jaden were at that time just as hard as Tindril and uh, Firak are now. It's just like sometimes raids have super super hard fights. Um, but I do think that that could be a design goal. You have the best gear in the game stop at a boss like Smolderon, and then you have simply bosses like Tindril and Firak be something that are aspirational goals for, uh, you know, an achievement or some kind of cosmetic that people want, and you have the gear end there, and that's your difficult your difficulty differentiator, rather than just it being all of Mythic. You don't have to nerf it as much, but then, then the question is, like, who gets gear off Smolderon and then sees unnerfed Tindril, and they're like, all right, guys, let's log on and do this now. Right, like it, it's just you, you apparently. You well, we would, we would already be done. We would already be done by then, right? This is like think about your guilds, right? Like you finish Smolderon, but because it's a cosmetic only difficulty, it's in world first mode or whatever, right? Like how many people could realistically do OG Tindril with the gear we had without it being nerfed realistically before their guild would die from giving up, right? Uh, it's not mm. a lot. So like, I guess the idea would be, it would have to be nerfed a little bit just in general, like from the outset, and then you leave it that way, something like that. Sure, well, I think I think you're definitely cooking with that idea. The only problem is sort of like the current systems the game has in place. Like for instance, if there was no mythic lockout, like every guild is gonna wanna try and prog till the end of the raid, right? Like why would they just arbitrarily stop? But the thing is, if there was no mythic lockout and I could, you know what I mean? Maybe there's a community of people who are PVPers or M plusers who just pug and they just, you know, they get to smolder on and they say, fuck it, all right, we're done. You know, we don't care. And I think that like, but in order for that sort of thing to work, you would need to remove the, the mythic lockout system. Like, I don't know. The thing is I 100% love the idea that there are really, really hard bosses and cool challenges. And I actually think like leaving them unnerfed could be cool. And I think that maybe it would set like kind of a different precedent if they did just leave them unnerfed and left them hard. But the problem is like the status quo in the game of like, there's this benchmark of cutting edge. And it's kind of funny to listen to Teapot's perspective because it's a little bit different. Like he's like, you know, try, he's in there, right? He's like trying to get cutting edge, but how his opinion might change if now he's been playing WoW for four years and he's got and cutting edge every tier and he's like yeah there's you know i kind of want to play guild wars but i'm still logging in with my guild but like man this boss 
sucks. You know, it's like, I feel like it, once getting cutting edge becomes the status quo and it becomes like something you feel like you need to get every tier, whether it's because you're trying to get gear or because you just want to do it or because you want to stick around with your guild, I think that does sort of change the way bosses sort of feel. And I feel like it does sort of rub off in the same way that M plus does, right? Like, I really like a dungeon and I like a challenging dungeon, but you know, if you have a trinket that you need from Sanguine Depths and you have to pug high Sanguine Depths over and over again 40 times to get your trinket, yeah, you probably hate the living crap out of that dungeon, you know? So I think there is kind of a middle ground with, like, what do the top people want, but also, like, you know, how does the average person interact with the boss or the dungeon or whatever? All right, I, yeah. I, I gotta go, but I do want to say I like the idea, and I think also there would be some, like, self-selection guilds. If there were guilds, there, there would be some guilds that would be like, yeah, we're just gonna do Smolderon, like, we're we want gear, right? We're gonna we're a guild for people that want gear. We're gonna get our gear. We're not gonna bother pulling that. That's for psychopaths, right? We're we're not touching that that tendril nonsense, right? And then people that didn't want to engage with it could do that. I do think you would have to nerf it somewhere between the like the January and February versions. Probably uh, would be I mean, like between the pre-January nerf and post-January nerf. I guess version of tendril would probably be the one that would be fair for to leave as like the the forever version of that fight that's just for cosmetics something like that and then the guilds that did want to be pulling that would be consisting ideally only of people that wanted to be pulling it obviously some would be for the prestige some would be for the cosmetics some would be because they enjoyed the the progress right but nobody would be there just like okay i need to do this because you know i'm in my guild for gear and my guild is a good guild that gets gear early which means they're a cutting edge guild which means i have to be here for cutting edge if i want to be here next year so i can get the gear yeah like that uh that cycle and that's sort of broken. how it feels yeah yeah i think maybe like add another layer of achievement maybe of like you know uh, it's, it's just hard because it's just how every guild is you know like wow's been this way for so long it's hard to really change it um all right if dranos has to leave well, i do want to do one other thing though uh you have to leave right now oh he's gone that's hype okay he's holy um, shit he's out yeah. he, he actually he, he, yeah, me, he was actually kind of mad about your list he didn't really want to say it. <laughs> yeah um well i was gonna do, do some like honorable mentions and i only have two uh, and they're not necessarily like honorable, like should have been on the list. I just think they're interesting to discuss. Uh, what did you all think of Broodkeeper? Hated it. Uh, what... I think it was the, it was the, like the idea of like, I'm on the ads and then all of a sudden, oh, they messed up an egg and there's a giant dragon and we're dead. Like that's another fight where it was just constantly felt like I had no control and just some other guy messes up and then we wipe. Yeah. I think Broodkeeper is totally depends on your role on that fight. Uh, I think if you were a DPS that was doing the ads, that was actually really fun. Uh, just in general, like that was fun to do. Um, and then you go to the last phase and the last phase is like, okay, uh, the worst role by far are the people who are just following the boss around and just single targeting it for five minutes while seemingly nothing else happens on your screen. Like that's horrible. Uh, so I think that I'm surprised no one put it on their list. I almost did because I just thought it was a fun fight to figure out and see exactly how we're going to do it. I'm not a fan of them doing ad bosses for the second to last boss, but I think Bro Broodkeeper was about as good as you could make a shitty ad fight like that. I just wanted to give it a little shout out. I, I don't think you did that, right? Uh, T-Paw, you didn't do a uh, vault, at least when it was current. Uh, no, no, we're, we're actually... Uh, we're on Mythic Broodkeeper right now, in fact. Oh, boy. We should be killing it this weekend. Exciting stuff. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, the I, I think conceptually it's actually quite an interesting encounter, but, you know, I'm actually going to say the opposite of what I've said a lot. I think it would actually be a fight that people would look at more favorable, and I think I definitely would if it was just a lot easier. If it was kind of like an early, like, oh, look at this. This is kind of an interesting concept, isn't it? Rather than um, a, a second to second to last boss. 100%, right? You know, I, yeah. I, I think you were talking about this, right? Like, you slap Korok... Uh, Korogan right there and make Korog like a really big uh, penultimate encounter for Vault of the Incarnates and just move Diana down and kind of make it a, a fight that, you know, where, where because because as it stands right now, like there's, there's a million ways where things can go pretty badly wrong and, you know, it's it's not going to work out well, you know, it's uh, you're just going to going to go again pretty much. Uh, and yeah, there's definitely, there's not really a lot going on on the boss. It's like, oh yeah, we gotta, we gotta kill the eggs. And that's an interesting mechanic, but then you've got to do it for five minutes, right? And it's, uh, you know, there's only so many eggs you can destroy uh, before things start to get a little bit less exciting, I suppose, in that regard. So yeah, that would be the, my take on Brewkeeper. I think not, not a bad idea, but maybe not the best idea for, uh, you know, a, a, a penultimate encounter. For okay, and then I only have one more boss I want to talk about. Uh, what was your all's experience with Dathia? So you just killed uh, it, right? I, you must have just killed it. I think Dathia was the reason I got kicked from my guild. <laughs> well, we didn't even do Dathia, unfortunately.
uh, quite tragically, uh, because we just broke the fight and DPS and ignored the ads and completely ignored the mechanic. So you probably had a favorable opinion of Dathia. Actually, no, you're a masochist. Dathia is a very disliked, just a very claustrophobic, like, movement and positioning intensive fight that people really, really dislike, generally. I mean, I think there's something that could be said for it if, um, if there was a good telegraph for the, uh, for charging up the ads, right? Instead of having to look at really it bad animations and have like yeah. the and have like the the macro uh, the the markers and stuff, so like you have the all preset up there as well. I like, I don't hate the boss from a conceptual standpoint, you know. I, I think it's even quite interesting, right? You have to spread out the charges, and then you've got to bring the ad in. You've got to get knocked up by the ad to you know prevent the boss from getting charged up, all that kind of good stuff. You know, that's you know that's relatively interesting, I think. Uh, but yeah, like the the way it actually plays out, certainly in Awakened, it, it, it's literally a do nothing boss. Like you just pump pretty much until it dies uh which is like oh you know whatever um but yeah conceptually i think there's there's some potential there but again i, I think you know I, I think this is something that's come up a lot in this in this conversation is uh blizzard's kind of unwillingness to i i, I don't mean this in a bad way by the way i'm going to preface this to break the role play immersion a little bit um especially on mythic encounters i think a lot of the fights are actually compromised by that philosophy a little bit, which I think is unfortunate, um, actually. And I would be very interested if they would actually uh, consider a different approach. I am a big fan of the roleplay in raids, even on Mythic, actually. One of the reasons why I like Echo of Notharia, the reason it's on that list, is because it is so incredibly epic, especially when you get towards the end of it. I love it. I had my, you know, in-game music blasting. I love the voice acting on that fight. It's so good, especially when you lose. Okay, he's like, you know, did you ever think there'll be any other outcome? How droll. Yes, let's go. Blizzard, I hear you. I love the roleplay. Sometimes you've got to make the hearts different colors. Sometimes you actually have to add a telegraph and not wait for the players to add one with a weak aura. Growl, how did Peace. you get kicked from your guild on Dathia? <laughs> so Dathia early on especially in progression was pretty strict with like you had to you would get those circles then you had to run the circles into the things and our raid leader basically decided like this is just too hard to try and do in play so he's just gonna sit and just watch us and basically 21st man that boss that's like when he first started doing it on some of the harder mm -hmm. bosses because uh i don't know but anyway so i had the brilliant idea of saying hey you can watch my pov because like you know i stream i don't care i'll load it up like it works for me and I, that let's just say that's a really rough boss as a healer and i spent a lot of time flying in the air as a in a tornado in bear form during that boss and i think he sort of like that was his first realization to my level of play and i, I just don't think it was a fair representation to my playing ability but that was one of his uh you know that he he watched basically all of my Dathia prog as a rest of druid and that did not go very well for me and then so if he was in the raid get... you could have hid you could right. have hid mm, that yeah. i see but but mm -hmm. but I'm not saying that was the only reason, but I think that was the first reason. Like, hmm, he's probably like, hmm, like this, this guy is a little bit suspicious. He's a little bit of a suspicious player. I, I stopped doing this in farm, but when we would recruit new players, I would always try to watch them the first like raid they had in our guild. Like I would use their POV and I stopped doing this because it made people like freak the fuck out. Like people were like super uncomfortable oh, yeah. and like really in their own head about shit and you weren't watching them actually play the game you were watching them like play very scared uh so i just i stopped doing it well, for that exact reason see well i know that that's a thing and it doesn't really affect me because i stream i just didn't take into account that i'm just actually bad so it wasn't it wasn't me like you know being nervous it was just me and the problem was he's he was watching <laughs> well you win some and you lose some you know